are a great investment or your maintenance fees will never go up. You have questions, we have the answer. At Wesley Financial Group, we're dedicated to helping timeshare owners get out of their financial nightmare. All you need to do is give my office a call. I will send you a timeshare exit information kit absolutely free explaining how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Call now for your free timeshare exit information kit. Call 800-761-0000. That's 800-761-0000. 800-761-0000. The views and opinions of the following program are solely those of the host and other contributors. These do not necessarily represent those of Liberty Acquisitions 825, Blue Water Broadcasting, its management, staff, or any advertisers. It's time for Montgomery's Conversational Radio Show. It's news and views on News Talk 93.1 FM. To join the conversation, call 272-9228. After damning politicians uphill and down dale for many years, as rogues, vagabonds, frauds, and scoundrels. I sometimes suspect that, like everyone else, I often expect too much of them. Joey Clark. Welcome into News and Views. In the afternoon, as we're calling it online, Joey Clark Live. I'm Joey. He's Eddie. Hey, Joey. How you doing today? I'm bad. I'm good. Fresh off that fishing trip? Yeah, man, that was great. Yeah? Great time. Great time with my son for his birthday. All the way around, just one Okay, time. yeah. Well, I, I like the photos. I like the catch you got. You yeah. got a, a nice uh, yeah, I think we kept there. About 50, about 50 crappy. Ooh. Yeah. Is it crappy or crappy? Depends on what part of Alabama you're from. That is true. <laughs> we were on Lake Martin, so it's crappy. Now, but up uh, near the north where they honk a little bit more when they talk, uh, it's crappy, I think. Yeah, and it's uh, Sackalay if you go in the Carolinas. Well, that's just lame. That's totally different, but yeah. Anyway, good to see you, man. Good, to, see you, good to have you here. And on the line, we have the one, the only Jeff Poor, of course, uh, host of the Jeff Poor Show and editor in chief there at 1890 News. Jeff, how are you today? I'm doing well, Joey. Uh, where they honk a little more. Anybody in particular you were uh, referring to? No, no. There are just a lot of folks that when they try to say bright night light, they, it comes out bright night light. So it's, uh, you know, it, I'm not particularly picking on anybody, Jeff. Don't get me in trouble more than I already am. And are you okay? I know you've been down to the state house. Have you survived today dealing with all those guys? No, it's, it's always a, uh, it's, it's always, today was a work in progress because Here's the way it works today, Joey, and you will you will sympathize with me as a fellow radio host. Uh, come on down. We don't have your guest list yet, but we will uh, let your show proceed. We will we will bring the lawmakers to you. Oh. So like <laughs> <laughs> it's like a blind kind of trust uh, throughout the uh, morning, but uh, somehow or another, it came together and worked. Now, uh, help me out with one of these issues, because I read, as it uh, was released by 1819 News yesterday, Attorney General Marshall's take on this new ethics legislation that's been proposed and now has passed the House, for folks who don't know. And yet, when you look at the breakdown, uh, some of the sponsors of the bill are saying, no, this is a really great change. It'll create more clarity. And people like the AG or DAs can still prosecute things like bribery. Um, I'm honestly don't have the expertise to really understand who's right in this. What's your sense of it? Well, I, I don't know about this particular piece of legislation. I, I'm still I'm undecided. But here's what the critics do not acknowledge with their critiques of Representative Matt Simpson's bill is there are problems in our ethics framework in this state. There's no question about it. There's a constant turf war between the Attorney General's Office and the Ethics Commission. And that needs to be fixed, and it has to be done by the Alabama legislature. No one else can do that. No one else can add clarity to that situation. But the other thing is, like, the, the ethics law, I think, is so broad, can be broadly interpreted. And, and pressure lawmakers, they have to go through orientation before they even get to uh, sit and take a vote. And what they, one of the parts of orientation, Joey, is they have like three so-called experts who are ethics lawyers in this state who apparently understand the law better than anybody and will tell these guys this is okay and this is not okay. And oftentimes when these members start asking questions, 
they get three sometimes contradicting answers to their questions about what's ethical and what isn't. And what's the problem that tells me, well, that, that's a problem in itself, but here's what you need to know. And we're watching what's going on with Donald Trump and, you know, the way these prosecutors are, are going after him for, I would think, a political motivation. It's pretty clear to me that's the case. Right. You have a broadly interpreted statute, ethics framework, and if you have the right kind of prosecutor, DA or attorney general, I'm not saying that we have any of that now, but we could, that they can use a broadly interpreted ethics law to go after their political opponent. They could go after an elected official. Uh, they, they, they do this. Uh, this. This was the whole Matt Hart, Mike Hubbard thing. Not that Mike Hubbard was necessarily uh, – well, he, I mean he was did a lot of bad stuff. There's no question about it, but – you, you're kind of picking and choosing what laws you're going to enforce, and you can take the laws and the statute, and you can say this is the intent, and this is what we're prosecuting. And I, I don't, I don't like it being so wide open that somebody can just decide, well, we can use this part of the ethics law to go after this guy. It needs to be clearly stated what is allowed and what isn't. And then if you don't like the laws they pass. Vote them out of office, I would say. But anyway, the, the 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 critics are not acknowledging the big problem that there's just the ethics framework we have now is not working real well. Well, if there are already ethics laws on the books saying that you can't be essentially a lobbyist or be lobbying on behalf of your own bottom line, especially while you're in the legislature, you know, we did those stories there at eighteen nineteen news. I think I did a kind of a surmising op-ed on it about the McCutcheons, and yet I don't I didn't see any uh, actions brought against them. And I've always wondered since the beginning of these ethics laws, to your exact point, that when you create this uh, veneer of, oh, we've got all these ethics rules in place, uh, sometimes the informal games uh, actually continue. It's kind of like, oh, we're not going to pay players in college football. Uh, okay, yeah, the Red Elephant Club didn't help save it out. Give me a break. So it's I, I think that's always been going on here, and I, I worry we're – kind of shuffling deck chairs on the Titanic. Uh, I just would want to hear more from uh, Rep. Simpson and from the Attorney General, uh, because from the way Simpson described it and what Marshall was talking about, I didn't I didn't really see the overlap. Uh, it seemed like they were focusing on particular parts of the bill and, and not really coming to terms. Though, uh, to Simpson's credit, he just seems disappointed that uh, Marshall is feeling the way he feels. But I, I guess we'll see what the Senate decides. They should be able to talk this thing through. Well, here's something else that, that, that you, you can't ignore. And uh, and now, look, the legislature as a body is going to do what benefits the legislature as a body sometimes. And this wasn't a partisan vote. I mean, it went it, it went overwhelmingly. I, I think there were just a handful of no votes, but it went overwhelmingly pretty bipartisan uh, for Simpson's bill. And, and my understanding from Matt Simpson is who's going to carry it upstairs in the Senate is Jabbo Wagner, the Rules Committee chairman. So if he's going to carry that bill, that guy, I mean, he gets whatever he wants on the floor. That right. tells me that this thing's got a pretty good shot at like, becoming a law soon. Well, uh, maybe that's why the Attorney General is trying to get out in front of it. We shall see. A again, folks, you're talking to Jeff Poor here. Now, a story that's gone fairly big on 1819news.com uh, is, well, now the Morgan County District Attorney's Office has subpoenaed 19 people. It came out uh, yesterday, or came out on Monday, excuse me. This is according to court records. This is after the officer-involved shooting death of Stephen Perkins was leaked. Uh, was 1819 News the first to publish that footage? We were the only ones. Only to ones, yeah. The footage, and we continue to be the only ones. So this is the weirdest thing, Joey. I mean, the footage is, and, and I won't get into how we obtained it, but it, it's it's fair game, I think. It's a government video. But um, the, the 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 other media outlets are acting like, well, we don't we don't publish this kind of stuff. We we're not going to put this up. Uh, but there's a gag order out there on this when it comes to who can and can't talk about this this pending murder charge against uh, that officer Marquette in question. And but uh, anyway. I think the what kind of shocks me is like they published a there's a ring camera footage that they've been really leaning on to really kind of I don't portray a certain narrative and <laughs> the footage that we've obtained it's not good I mean it, it clearly 
the police manual was not followed in this video. Right. Uh, but does it, does, it, does it rise to the level of a murder charge is the question, and that's that, that that's the, the fundamental question here. Uh, but, but anyway, the, these media outlets are treating it like, well, it's not authorized by the government, so we're not going to run it. I mean, when did that ever become like a standard? It's so it's so bizarre that these these, these possible media outlets are like kind of dismissive of it. Well, well, so right wingers and eighteen nineteen news, you know, you can't trust those guys or whatever. It, it's the same old same old. So I, I I don't I can't explain it, Joey, why they are going about it the way they are. But it, I I suspect if they had obtained this video. Uh, and not us that they would have ran with it. Well, and it isn't just absurd. The, the it's almost like uh, faux, like gatekeeping, but without any teeth. Feckless, flaccid, even gatekeeping. Because you can go to eighteen ninety news dot com and you can go to Twitter. I, I think we've all been sharing. I saw Dale Jackson, of course, sharing this. It's right in his neck of the woods, his backyard. So it, it's uh, it, it's just bizarre to me that folks think they can still sort of rule the roost. But uh, maybe the good news is that day is over there's actual competition in media here in this beloved state of ours are you surprised has this happened before where you see a da issuing subpoenas about a leak like this no i, I have never seen something like this what what it did uh, you know it, it's kind of weird that the da is moving he's moving faster on this than he did this actual murder charge in the stephen perkins situation uh, that, that you know, that they're trying to make an example out of somebody, I suppose. But what this reminds me of, Joey, is that WikiLeaks, right before the presidential election in 2016, and, and when that came out, it was just this dump, right, of just all of this, like, hacked email or whatever. And it was what it was, and it was obtained in, in a wrong way. But I remember at the time, I think it was Chris Cuomo then for CNN was like, well, you know, if, if you have, if you're caught with this on your computer, you could face some kind of liability as well. And it's like you said, it's like, it's, it's just gatekeeping mentality. And there's power in that. And these media outlets really like having that kind of power, but they're losing it. I mean, they're just, they're, they're, these media outlets don't have, they're not the only show in town anymore. I just think there's some kind of like, hey, we're the guys who like believe the right things, and we had the formal training as journalists. You need to listen to us because we're, we're going to do it the right way. And they don't have the, that moral high ground anymore. They, they, they just this is a product of that. Well, and and it, I was ranting about this yesterday, in particular with uh, Kirsten Welker on Meet the Press, <laughs> saying Donald Trump keeps claiming these cases. I think you just made this claim, Jeff. These cases against Trump are election interference. He's falsely claiming that it's election interference. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean by stop inserting your opinion and hiding behind that it's uh, objective fact? Why don't we have a different opinions and then we can hash it out? That would be, I think, the more honest approach. Well, that's the way they were. It's like. Trump falsely asserts that there was anything that was untoward about the 2020 election, or they, they love to do that. They love to use that word falsely as a clarifier to make their own judgment. Well, it's just like global warming. Well, uh, the consensus of scientists and meteorologists would agree that the planet is warming, and there's no room for doubt. So, you know, you must accept our conventional wisdom or else. And people just, that's not how the world works. There's always going to be skeptics. And that's what these guys got to get over in their profession. But they, they're, they're, they're going down swinging, even to the detriment of their media organizations, which are, are going bankrupt and belly up or downsizing and laying them off one by one. Well, and uh, like I said, we have actual competition in this great state of ours. If uh, folks want to check out what you're writing about, thinking about, how can they do so, Jeff? Uh, Twitter.com backslash Jeff underscore poor. Well, appreciate it as always. Talk again soon. Thanks, man. Thanks again, Joey. Again, Jeff Poor, folks, always appreciate his uh, insights and just working with him. Um, got a good relationship there with Jeff and the entire team there at 1819. Uh, we, in fact, should have Erica Thomas joining us. Now, she wrote one piece, and we're going to talk about other things, too, but she wrote one piece. If you haven't seen it yet, where have you been? The Alabama Snake Guide, Identifying Venomous Snakes and What to Do if You See Them.
What do you do when you see a uh, snake? What do you see a snake? Non venomous. Do I have a, a machete or a snake gun or a shotgun or? No, nah, you just walk up on it. I, I run away. <laughs> like get the hell out of there. What about a little green snake? Do you oh no 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 that. no. But if it's like if I'm in say a woods, yeah. like a big old property, a lot of acres, and you're just trekking around the woods, and maybe you're off the trail a little bit mm -hmm. too. Yeah, if you see anything slithering down there, I'm going to be very because it could easily be a rattlesnake. Uh, copperhead, water moccasin, all these different things. But just don't mess with those. A non venomous snake looking for a little snake. No, sure. Just a non venomous one. Let's just take a chance. Apparently, I used to have family members down in Andalusia oh, that oh. would just, uh, and they, I can't remember his name because it's several cousins removed. Mm -hmm. I think Kelly was his name, but he would seriously catch and wrangle rattlesnakes mm -hmm. by just catching them. Yeah, he would I, bait them, I'm goad them into like striking, that, really. and then he'd grab it right behind the head. Not me. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. I ain't doing that no. stuff. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen, we used to call them black racers. I don't know the real name for them. But, man, they would, it's a black snake, and mm. I've never seen one under four foot. Okay. And uh, they will, um, the theory was they'd always chase you, but I guarantee every time we, time we saw one, we'd take off running, and it did feel like they were chasing us. I don't know if they turned and went the other way or not, but you could hear those leaves rattle when you would look, and you'd just see four feet of snake. And, he, yeah, you know, and they're non-venomous, but. Well, and you were telling me about this other one where a guy was, this is a non-venomous snake, that, <laughs> but like a big boa or anaconda? Anaconda. Where was this? Uh, Brazil. Probably uh, an anaconda. Though. Yeah, it was a company, uh, Dewar Manufacturing. They were building a water plant in the middle of the rainforest. And uh, one of their guys went missing. Mm -hmm. And a little while later, like literally a couple of hours later, they saw this snake uh, just off where they were building, not even 50 yards off the uh, project, with a huge lump in its belly. Oh, so no. they killed the snake and they sliced open the belly and out rolled that dude. Closed, fully closed. Uh, it, it, it just. That yeah. has to be one of the worst ways to go. It went out as a safety brief. Just generally the idea of being eaten by an animal is just, it's horrifying. That's yeah. one of the things that truly terrifies me to my core. Sure. I admit it. Like a bear, a shark, an alligator, a crocodile. With the bear. That's the easy thing. <laughs> Uh, good luck. I Hopefully hope, that bear hits you and knocks you uh, out so I you don't feel a thing. bear likes poop because I'm going to be pooping all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, good thing I wore my brown pants today. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's go to line one. You're on there. Who's this? Crawdad. Hey, hey Crawdad. Crawdad. You guys are bringing up a lot of memories on things. That's not, I love good snakes, and I'm fear the heck out of the bad ones. I've dealt with them both. Elias, uh, but yeah, who is it, uh, dear Mr. Joey, that you said down there uh, Andalusia in the Covington County? Who is that? That's kinfolk to you. Uh, it would be the Clarks down there in that area. Really? Okay. Okay. Long story, if you ever get a chance, pull up your uh, your Alabama map and look down into Covington County and follow how long the river runs through there. I was I, I was in that river one time with a friend, and uh, we're, we're, we're going down, and all of a sudden he jumps up like he'd been bit, but it wasn't. It was a soft-shell turtle Ooh. sitting in the sand. It scared the hell out of both of us when he jumped <laughs> yeah. back. <laughs> but anyhow you you would be the person that they they did not uh remember in the first morning show but please help me there's going to be a low country boil in this area mm -hmm. soon remind me who and that is i think is to raising money for helping autistic is that Autist, autism for if I'm right and I was half asleep I think can you refresh my memory you're going to do a good low country boil for raising please help me this is the uh, mud bug ball mud yes. bug ball. at the biscuit stadium 4 to 7 on April the 13th biscuit Steven, biscuit stadium mm -hmm. On what day again, please? April the 13th. April 13th. Time at night, you say? 
Yeah, four in the afternoon to seven at night. Four to seven. Uh, 13, 4 to 7, Biscuits. Thank you very much. Thank you, You're Crawdad. Welcome. Love you, brother. Bye-bye. Yeah, it's a great way. I think the the idea of raising money by just getting together, eating, and drinking is probably the best way to go, I think. Nothing wrong with that. Can't argue with that. Uh, you know, sometimes people get into these competitions, though. How much you could eat? How much you could eat? Like, who looks better naked? That one's... <laughs> It's kind of. I'm uh, out. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not interested either. We, do we sign up sober, or is that something we sign no, up for? No, but that's later? what's funny. No, like actual fitness people are allowed in the Who Looks Better Naked contest. It can only be average looking dad bod. So you have to actually examine. I'm out. It's like, well, they look like all look like Sasquatches to me. So, uh, well, you can have your. Uh, but he Sasquatch, carries himself with such. You can also have the the bald version of the albino Sasquatch. Right. Well, but he carries himself with such confidence. I mean, is that a helicopter? Two seven two nine two two eight. This part of the program brought to you by River Region Contracting, and they're at River Region Contracting. They can well help you out with that roof of yours. Uh, they're called the premier roofing contractor here in the area for good reason because they like to educate their customers on their roofs so whether you have an asphalt or a metal roof you should have it inspected every couple years uh, you might as well do it every year because of the crazy weather we yes. have here these days especially if you also have a lot of a tree canopy or any overhang over the house oh, yeah. um, you want to get this checked early and often and here's the great news at River Region Contracting. Their inspections and estimates of that roof of yours, their inspections and estimates are always free. Absolutely free, Joey. And the estimates are accurate. They've been accurate for me every single time. And they show up on time? Yep. They don't leave a mess? Nope, they're very professional. And they also are insurance specialists, so they know how to work a claims process. They yeah. don't immediately run to the insurance company after they find one initial problem. Right. They do a full-on examination. They get into actually working on it. That way, they can walk you through that insurance claim process and be well uh, really swift and practical and even pleasurable about it they're that good they're that good there at river region contracting so call todd clark and his team today 356-8635 that's 356-8635 and be sure to tell them that joey and eddie those fellas on the radio sent you he may not know whether he's coming or going but whether you're going to work or coming home, Greg Budell is there. Mornings, 6 till 9, and afternoons, 3 till 6. Only on News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. This is former Alabama Supreme Court Justice Glenn Murdoch. Alabama is a great place to live and work and raise our families because Alabamians are a good people of faith and traditional values. But a huge gambling bill in Montgomery would change our culture forever. 10 massive casinos bringing more crime to our big cities and small towns, highly addictive cell phone betting, and the state selling the lie of lottery riches to the poor and most vulnerable. With all this wrong in the world, this is no time to give up on our traditional values in Alabama. Call and ask your senator to be the leader you elected them to be. To stand strong and vote no on gambling and keep Alabama a great place to live and work and raise our families. Thank you. Call your senator at 334-261-0800. 334-261-0800. 334-261-0800. Paid for by Eagle Forum, Alabama. Thompson Tractor is the go-to source for a complete range of the best equipment for your next construction project. Thompson Tractor also has the trusted parts and expert service you've come to expect for more than 65 years all of which keeps your business up and running so you can focus on the work you do. And now is a great time to get the compact equipment you need because right now there's financing starting at 0% for 36 months on any CAT compact equipment, including skid steers and mini excavators. These machines don't sit around for long, but no worries. If it's not here, we can pull from one of our other 16 locations in Alabama and Northwest Florida. And hey, if you're not ready to buy, Thompson Rents is here so you can rent what you need. So visit ThompsonTractor.com for all the details and for the location nearest you. Thompson Tractor and Thompson Rents. We're here for you.
For too long, Alabama's statewide news companies have shamed us for our conservative Christian values. Alabama deserves a news company that cherishes our culture, a company that isn't bought and paid for by the powers that be. 1819 News is that company, run by Alabamians for Alabamians. 1819 News celebrates what is good and beautiful about our state, while exposing those who work against our values in secret. Just go to 1819news.com to learn more. Subscribe to our newsletter. That's 1819news.com. Hi, this is Bo Goodson from the Goodson Group. Have you ever considered turning your home into a rental and build wealth at the same time? People throughout the River Region are doing that right now. By investing wisely in the right property or turning your current home into a rental is the secret. Hiring a property manager to professionally manage your property is the way to prosperity. Our company does all of the advertising, personally showing prospective tenants, does a thorough background check and credit report before moving forward. Over 15 critical services are provided to our clients in protecting the asset, but also providing the best residence in your home possible. Collecting rent on time and frequent inspections help landlords feel better about renting their house. And to provide clean, well-kept homes that anybody would be proud to call home. For a complete list of property management services, call Bo Goodson at the Goodson Group at 221-2883 or 551-0225. Hey, this is Lyle from Margaret's Swiss Jewelry, and I do my radio advertising on Blue Water. I'll tell you what, I use most of the stations, and I've been using it for so long. It's hard to tell with the money you spend on advertising if it does any good. When they come in and say, I heard you on the radio, I know it's Blue Water, and I love Blue Water. Blue Water Broadcasting is the number one most listened to radio group in the River Region. Find out how to put this reach to work for your business. Call us to find out how we can help. Blue Water Broadcast. Local folks helping local business. Rich Thomas Weather, a service of Wiley Sanders Truck Lines, where dump truck drivers are in demand. Wiley Sanders is on the grow. We need dump truck drivers now. Call 855-77-9785. Rich Thomas Weather. Well, hi, everybody. Some much cooler air is funneling into the state, which means some cool days and some cold nights ahead. Today's high temperature in the upper 60s is way below normal for this late in the season. A little breezy, good bit of sun. Tonight, mostly clear and chilly. Overnight low temperature falls to about 43. I think we'll be in the upper 60s again on Thursday and Friday with lots of sun. In fact, uh, the nights on Thursday and Friday night will fall to the upper 30s. Then a little warmer over the weekend. From the National Tropical Weather Conference, this is Rich Thomas for Blue Water Broadcasting. At ASE Credit Union, financing your next adventure is easier than ever with rates as low as 5.25%. Apply online or visit your local branch today. Federally insured by the NCUA Equal Opportunity Lender. ASE Credit Union, your life, your goals, your ASE. Live local talk, the River Region's only 24-hour News Talk FM station. News Talk 93.1 FM WACV. This is how you conduct yourself in a democracy. Joey Clark. Welcome back to News and Views in the Afternoon. I'm your host, Joey Clark. And, uh, well, Eddie, we've got a guest on the stream with us here. Really? Yeah. That sounds interesting. Yeah, we have Erica Thomas of 18 <laughs> News. Hey, well, Erica, how you doing? Hey, everybody. Can y'all hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Sound great. Absolutely. Okay, good. I was hoping this microphone would be a little bit better than my than my phone that I usually use. <laughs> now, you're loud and clear. It's, it's great seeing you here on the program. Now, uh, you wrote a piece that was very popular, dominant for a few days here. It's still dominant. Uh, the story about the, uh, well, the Alabama snake guide, identifying yeah. venomous snakes and what to do if you see them. How did this story come to be? Well, when I started working at 1819 News, uh, the the main goal is to uh, tell people, you know, things they need to know and things that they want to know and show them amazing, wonderful things about the state of Alabama. Uh, and of course, venomous snakes are not wonderful and amazing for everybody, but they do have a purpose. Um, and so we have six uh, venomous snakes in Alabama. And I started seeing, well, every year around this time of year, I start seeing posts on Facebook like, oh, watch out for this. You know, this this copperhead is this and it can do this. Um, and a lot of times the information 
that you see on social media is inaccurate. Mm. I've seen photos of, of water snakes in South Alabama and people said they were copperheads. That's just not, not likely. Um, and so I wanted to speak with an expert and really learn a lot about ways to identify the different venomous snakes in Alabama, but also to tell people what to do if they see one. And so that's why I got the idea of this for the story. Now, Eddie and I were just kicking that around uh, like the goofballs that we are. And I said, if I see one of those, I, I just, uh, unless I run away, I just get out of there. Well, yeah, that's certainly uh, the best advice you can give anybody. Um, and, you know, what I learned in this story that was the most interesting thing to me is we always hear venomous snakes have flat heads. They have eyes that look like cat eyes. Well, those things are not always true. You can actually see a venomous snake and it appears to have round pupils. Um, even the coral snake here, it has a round head um, and it's it's a, an extremely dangerous snake. Um, and then in some parts of Alabama, you'll see the cottonmouth uh, more, which is South Alabama, also known as the water moccasin. But then when you get further north, you'll see a copperhead. And actually last year I was in North Georgia and I was walking my dog and he went through some leaves and I saw something move a little bit. Mm. And about that time, I saw this snake's head come out of the leaves and he tried to strike my dog. Mm. And Ooh. somehow, some way, I yanked my dog just in time. Like I was like mama bear yanking my dog <laughs> and he didn't get him, but I really thought he did. And it was a copperhead. And the, very aggressive, like the copperheads and the, the cottonmouth or water moccasin, they tend to be pretty aggressive snakes, right? Angry. Well, yeah, and the scariest thing is they can camo themselves. This, this copperhead that I saw, I took a video of it after because I really thought my dog was bitten. And something that's very important is if, if you or your dog are bitten, it's good to be able to give a description of the snake when you go to the emergency room so they know exactly how to treat you. Mm -hmm. So I got a video of the snake before I started getting my dog ready to go to the vet. And, and, uh, you can barely see the snake in the video. And it was a large, it was large for a copperhead. Mm, man. Well, I'm glad the close call there wasn't, uh, awful. And quick, quick question. Yeah. Did you smell anything? Did you notice the smell when, um, after or around that? I didn't. I'm sure if you would have been there, I would have, because you said you would poop yourself if. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, that was yeah. the bear. I, I, was, yeah. I wasn't talking about just that in particular, but most times no, when I've I run didn't. into copperheads and a lot of venomous snakes, um, there's usually a pungent smell. And it no, maybe just me, but I smell like a pungent that. smell. We were out uh, in Dahlonega, so we were in the mountains, um, and it just smelled like outdoors. And, yeah. you hmm. know, I never, I never remember thinking, oh, there's a strange smell, which there could have been, but this was also in June and my allergies were pretty bad. Oh yeah. Yeah. Everything. everything <laughs> what was, was the uh, smell you know, like Eddie? You... A, you get a, I've heard, and I've heard this, uh, like referred to as sour cucumbers, but to me, whenever I've huh. been around a snake, it could smell it. It's just putin strong, like body odor. I don't know how to describe it. Like a pickle factory. It's just, just body odor. Just mm -hmm. a real pungent smell. Well, that's pleasant. Yeah. I would Thank suggest not getting close enough to smell. Um, also, <laughs> that's it, a thought too. The expert that I talked to with Alabama snake removers told me with the eye thing, if you're so close that you can see the eyes, you're too close. Well, so the last one I saw the eyes of, I'd let it swim to me so I could blast it. And I wouldn't shoot till I could see its eyes because I only had a shotgun with one shell and I wanted to make sure I got it right. Yeah, we had to hit one with a paddle one time because yeah. it got in the water and was just making a making beeline. A beeline right to you? Yeah. And it went away after we hit it. But uh, yeah. well, I'm glad your gun didn't jam, Eddie, and I'm glad the paddle worked. Yeah. I'm, I would be uh, pat using the paddle to get away. <laughs> yeah. No, we were just more bemused by like, look at they this little guy too, yeah. coming at us like yep. this. Like, yeah, we were just uh, astounded, almost impressed by uh, how he moved towards us. But no, I love this story. And it is really, it's a fun story, but it's also a great reminder uh, of what you should do. Be careful out there, especially if you're in a, a very wooded area. Uh, off the beaten path you, you never know when you're gonna see something like exactly. that and now, they, can, they have a striking distance each snake is different but i mean you really have to be careful to make sure you're not within that striking distance so really the best thing is to avoid the situation if possible and get out of there 
Yeah, and uh, just get out of there, folks. Uh, that That's my instinct is to just move <laughs> away, move out of the area. Now, uh, did you have a chance to actually see this debate uh, last night, or I guess two nights ago, with uh, Dick Brubaker and Caroline Dobson? This was the uh, Congressional District 2 um, debate. I did not, I was not allowed in, so I had to go to Plan B. Um, thankfully, I didn't have to go to Plan C which was sit in the bathroom and listen in. Um, but, but I did, I, I went to the debate knowing that this would be a possibility that I would not be able to get in because um, they were not allowing media in, which I thought was a disservice to the people, but it was the bottom line for a television station and that's what their concern was. So uh, no other media was allowed in. Hmm. Um, but like I said, I had a plan B. So I went with that and I was able to, um, pretty thoroughly cover this debate, uh, the stories on 1819news.com. And I really have been looking into this, this runoff that's coming up April 16th on the Republican side. It's Caroline Dobson and Dick Brubaker. A lot of people know who Dick Brubaker is. He's a former state representative. Um, he has name recognition. And Caroline Dobson, she is a, an attorney in Montgomery, uh, kind of a political newcomer in Alabama, but she's she's very strong. I think the best thing about both of these candidates is that they're both really strong and they both have uh, great qualities. Oh, absolutely. I've, I think I've interviewed Dick and Caroline mm -hmm. at this point, what, five, six times? Least, yeah. And uh, they're going to be on the show every week leading up to that April 16th runoff. And yeah, that's my sense of them that I don't know if it's a matter of the issues where there's really daylight between the two. It, isn't it more, I say, like a personality thing, how people connect? Maybe it's a generational thing. I've been trying to find a way to make a distinction between the two. Well, I think if you read the debate story, um, you'll see some distinctions in every uh, every category. I kind of broke up the, ca the story into categories of what they were discussing, what they were debating. They talked about inflation, of course, LGBT issues. Um, and there were some pretty big differences, uh, but I think above all, they're, they're both conservative candidates, uh, and I think they would both do a, a fine job. And I think it's really something we need to focus on is the positive aspect of this, is that we do have two pretty good choices, and that's kind of rare these days. Now, uh, Erica, we don't normally do this because you're on the phone, but we've, I believe, got folks calling in, and I imagine it's about the snake story. Uh, but uh, you want to go to the phones with us? Sure. Awesome. And and by the way, you've kind of inspired me. I don't know if I'm actually going to pull the trigger on this, but I'm tempted to write an Alabamian's guide to political snakes. And uh, like, I know, isn't this good? I'm this is good. That see is where really I really good. And then I'm going to have to, of course, include myself. Talk radio hosts are the worst. I would say you should go back to like the 2007 era. Start there. Okay. Maybe the yeah. last 20 years. <laughs> it would get, it would get good. I, I think I'm going to have to go back to the Garden of Eden, honestly. <laughs> uh, let's go to a, a real biologist. Yes, hey, biologist. a real biologist. Yeah, and uh, I love when they put these out there because it takes individuals like this. You know very little about snakes to learn about them. Now, with the eye thing, it's about 90% right because it's elliptical eyes. Now, the one that's got a round eye, we have, we have two genuses. We have Viperidae, for families, which is your vipers, which we have five vipers, mm -hmm. and your diamondback, rattlesnake, your pygmies are in South Alabama. Timber's pretty much all over. Mm -hmm. You have water moccasins and cottonmouths to be found anywhere. I, trust me, I found cottonmouths in North Alabama blowing beaver dams. Oh, wow. uh, you're, you're the one that's elapidae is part of the cool snake family. I mean, the uh, cobra family, that's elapidae. They're rear fang, they have brown eyes. And it's that one, yellow against black, venom black, black against yellow, Good. you know, that's the whole jack thing. But yeah. that's only found in the very south area. You're not going to find them around here. Uh, your diamondback rattlesnake, South Alabama. Timber is pretty much everywhere. Now, the difference of your Viperidae and your Elapidae is Viperidae, you have heat-sensing things. So it's like infrared camera. Hmm. That's how they find their, their prey. And they, they have the fangs they inject. You know, they're venomous, not poisonous. The uh, this whole thing about the cucumbers, look, I took herpetology, and never in a herpetology book did say that snakes have a smell. Yeah, like I agree. Never read I've it heard that, but Just 
experienced I've it. I've heard that, but we were not taught that snakes have a smell. Now, maybe they do. Who knows? Dirty dogs smell like a dirty, wet dog. Yeah. Maybe it's an um, old wives' tale, like the TV it, or it, other it, things it, will it, turn I'll you blind. Bring yeah. Much smell yeah. It. Yeah. I think uh, I just figured that out. Say that again, Erica. I think I just figured that out. So part of my story talks about how snakes are attracted to places where mice might be. So maybe the snakes that people smelled that, that smelled like sour food had been in a trash can where there was a bunch of mice and they came out smelling like garbage. Hmm. I I have no clue. I'll, I walk in swamps all the time working and I've stepped over hundreds of water moccasins slash Cottonmouth. All right. The reason they have a name Cottonmouth is one of their defense or their warning mechanisms. Rattlesnakes have rattles. Also, you cannot judge, or you cannot tell the age of a rattlesnake by the number of rattles. Every time a rattlesnake sheds its skin, it adds a new rattle. But rattles break off, fall off periodically. They just do. So, if, you know, that's 12-year-old rattlesnake, 12 rattles. Well, if a rattlesnake sheds three times in one year, it gains three rattles, but it could lose two. Hmm. So that's another one of those fallacies and all that these you get i've never been chased by a water moccasin and, and I, I go hmm. around them all the time i step over them daily and work for work so i'm walking through beaver swamps or other swamps doing my job as a biologist i just step i've never had one chase me i've never now remember if, if a water moccasin is just swimming across a creek and you happen to be in the way it's not differ- differentiating of that's a humor or that's a boat it just wants to go from point a to point b that's what's really happening. And people want to go, they're attacking, and they'll do this. The other cool thing about cotton mouse and uh, copperheads is I was turkey hunting this morning, and we saw one and it's called cryptic coloration. It's basically camouflage. They look just like leaves. Hmm. It's really cool. I took a big video yes. of it and sent it to my wife and my daughters. But I'm really happy that individuals like this, like she is, is, does these stories, just tell people, hey, everything has a reason out there. Don't be scared. Just ease off, walk off. I mean, if someone said, how come you don't kill every snake you see? I said, I never get my job done. Well, I see him all day. Very so nice. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and thank you very much for doing that article. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you for reading. Um, I do want to say with the with the pupil thing, with the eye thing, mm-hmm. uh, one of the, the experts that I talked to has a photo of a copperhead with a round-looking eye. And so that that photo is in the story. If you go to 1819news.com and you find the story, it's under trending right now. So it's pretty easy to find. Um, you'll see the photo of a copperhead with the snake eyes and a copperhead with the round looking pupil. If you look really, really close, you'll notice that you can see the outline of where the cat eye would be. But this was low light. So just like our eyes do, uh, the oh, snake's wow. eyes dilate dilate so that's not always a telltale sign and also they can have injuries in their eyes that that cause them to stay open and so that's why it's just not it's not going to be a hundred percent telltale sign if if a snake has cat eyes or not if it's um if it's venomous yeah, and I'm seeing that in the story. I, I miss that. That is a crazy though. Uh, you're absolutely right. You can see the outline where Okay. Wow. Very. But very you cool. have to look really close in that photo, and you would never be that close in person, or you would you would be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, a lot of trouble. We got more calls rolling in. Uh, you you know what gets people talking here, Erica? So <laughs> let's go to uh, Clint Jr. Hey, Clint Jr. How you doing today? Good. Uh, we voted for me and my wife, Brew Baker, in the primary, but then my wife found an article saying he voted for the highest land tax increased in years is that true or what this that? goes all the way back to the early days of bob riley with the what that amendment won and what brubaker voted yes on was the uh like allowing the people to vote on it and he has and then he did support the uh millage tax increase here uh that 60 something percent of montgomerians uh, voted for oh and the second part the snakes Camping with my kids, I'm fishing while they're playing. Snake comes straight up to me out of the water, and it was long. It was not a venomous. It was a long king snake, I assume. But when it came up right in front of me, I started hitting it with a boat paddle. And then once it's down and you hit it a couple times, I grabbed it by the tail. You can swing a snake like a whip, and it'll pop its head off. 
What? What in the world is this phone call right now? <laughs> oh. You grab it by the tail and crack it like a whip, and it'd be oh, done for. Man, well, I heard of bringing that. a chicken's neck, but yeah, no, I've never heard of doing that to never a, a chicken snake. snake. Right. Uh, appreciate it, Clint. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Let's go to Chris. Hey, Chris. How y'all doing? Going? Doing all right. Well, I've got another snake story regarding the. I think know one of the old rhymes and a personal story about one of the copperheads that you've been talking about with your guest on the phone. And years ago, probably 20 years ago, me and my father went up to the Coosa County Mansion area and were riding around on four wheelers and we saw the copperhead stretched out on the dirt road. So, of course, we killed it and cut its head off with the shovel. And he wanted to show me how well they camouflaged their body in pine straw and dead leaves. So we had its head on the end, on the, in the scoop of the shovel. And as soon as I tossed its head onto the ground there where the pine straw was, the head disappeared as soon as it hit the ground. I believe it. Yeah, wow. I mean, yeah, I have a picture head. of when my dog almost got bitten, and you could you cannot see the snake because of the leaves. So. Wow, wow. Yeah, I mean, it was perfectly camouflaged as soon as it hit the ground. I had to stare and look and look. I mean, it it just disappeared as soon as you snapped your fingers. Yeah, well, you, you got to watch out, folks. This is why I like to stay indoors. Appreciate the call, Chris. Really great and hearing from you. My buddy Doug, he got bit by a rattlesnake in Greenville, and uh, it was a small one. Mm. And they saw the snake, seen it was a rattlesnake, and cut its head off. And then within five minutes, Doug went to reach for its head. Bit him. Ooh. $150,000 worth of venom later. Doug's still here, thank God. Thank God for Doug. Yeah, that's a talk about a trial to yeah. go through. Guess who had been drinking? <laughs> Doug. Doug. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. there you go, kids. Don't that is uh, crazy. drink it. Can still strike after they're dead. Yep. I've, I've seen that myself. Oh, I've skinned uh, moccasins before and water snakes, and man, that body, it keeps moving with no skin on it. It's the creepiest thing in the world. Yeah, <laughs> but don't be drinking while you're doing your snake handling. I no, think no, it's I the think, moral of the story. I think that's a good idea, Joey. Let's go, let's go to Dr. Ken. Hey, Dr. Ken. Hey there, Joey. Hey. Uh, for you and Eddie and the nice lady that you guessed, there are two or three practical ways you can distinguish uh, the venomous snakes from the benign snakes, and far and away, most of them are benign, as, as you know. Mm -hmm. And they're best left alone, but, uh, particularly king snakes. They, uh, they have a good record against rattlesnakes, mm -hmm. and most of the time, apparently, they're, they're successful in, in killing and eating mm -hmm. a, a rattlesnake of any size. But they are, of the benign snakes, they... They do not have the protruding jawline or mandible to accommodate the poisonous sacs that the, the sort of triangular-shaped poisonous or venomous snakes possess. So that's one that you can tell from, you know, six or eight feet away without trying to get an ophthalmoscope and get up close to see the pupils. Well, uh, well. That, the markings, of course, it, they're, they're easy to learn, but uh, on the copperhead, they almost invariably have that hourglass pattern to them. It's an hourglass turned transversely that runs down the back. And then if, if the snake is presented to you without a head to identify or with a head that's, that's as flat as a dinner napkin, which many times they are, if... Uh, if a mistake, misguided person brings them in and thinks he's done well, or he or she thinks the best thing to do is kill all snakes, uh, that there's another surefire way for the vipers, and that is to check underneath, far back at, at the anal vent. Beyond that, the scales are these little stripes that, that denote the, the plaques are doubled to per little stripe if it's a, one of our benign snakes. Venomous snakes, have, most of them, the vipers have a single scale running from there to the tip of the tail. So if you can just remember that that's 
more like a rattle would be at at or beyond the end of the tail. Uh, the single scoot is uh, is denotes a venomous snake. Double scoot uh, denotes a benign snake. The call snake about the the red, yellow, black. If you'll just remember that, and, and this is a beautiful snake, round mm-hmm. head, mm-hmm. Or smooth head, much like the king snake. They they share the same colors, but remember that red is the alarm or color, the identifying marker color. <laughs> if it touches yellow, that's the one that's kill a fella. If it touches black, then poison will lack. And if you remember, red's the alarm, and it's what the red touches. That'll uh, that'll get you my get you by most days. A good tough set of work boots and uh, keeping your distance is the best best prevention. There you go. 100%. Well, uh, great hearing from you, Dr. Ken. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, Erica, you, you no wonder. We haven't gotten this mis- many calls in a while. I think people are tired of the political snakes. They just want to talk snakes. Well, not only that. Yeah. We have a beautiful lady on. Who's well, not going to want to talk to a beautiful lady? Come on, Joey. Oh, thanks, y'all. Well, I will say, um, I like all of those tips, but um, even the flathead rule is not always accurate. So So check out the story on 1819 News to find out why you cannot rely on that. Again, the story, Alabama Snake Guide, identifying venomous Mm -hmm. snakes and what to do if you see them. Uh, Erica here consulted with an expert, and it is a very detailed story, really great story, trending for good reason. And, you know, uh, my favorite animal as I was growing up as a child was the mongoose because they can oh. always best snakes, especially uh, like a king cobra. They're always quicker. And, uh, yeah, I've never been a fan of snakes. So thank you for giving me the heebie-jeebies while also informing the population here, Erica. I appreciate that. You're welcome. I hope you sleep well tonight. <laughs> thank, thank you for that. Uh, well, and... Uh, if folks want to check out your work, how can they do so? You can go to 1819news.com, and you can also go to Facebook, Twitter. We have all that stuff. We do have a TikTok for now uh, because we we want to reach as many people as possible. It's really important for our messages and our stories to get out there because these are stories you're not going to see anywhere else. I promise. And so check us out, 1819news.com. You can subscribe to our newsletter. You'll get just one email every morning showing you all the big stories. Uh, you can also help support us. So we really appreciate that because we are a nonprofit. So we depend on people, uh, not large corporations. We're not getting money from, you know, the big guys. So any little bit of help we can get is awesome. Uh, we're working so hard day in and day out to inform the people of the state of Alabama. And if you want to send me a story idea or a story tip, you can email news at 1819news.com. Well, thank you again, Erica. And until next week, uh, have a good one. God bless. Thank you. Again, folks, that is Erica Thomas. Always great having her on the program. And, uh, yeah, l- like, look at all these calls rolling in, Eddie. This is Alabama, man. We have experience with snakes. This is why I stay inside. Nice. Well, the snakes come inside. Years yeah, ago. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. Suzanne and I were, Freaking we had a, a house on, a different house on the lake, and the basement, basement wasn't as sealed as it should have been. Mm. And a little, uh, little king snake came in, maybe a six, eight, ten incher, and we lost it. Oh, no. And then uh, we saw it again. It was wrapped around the dryer cord. So she came to get me, she come back downstairs. We lost it again. Oh, no. Then uh, while she was doing clothes, she dumped out the laundry basket. She saw it, but she thought Justin had put a fake snake in there. It was not the fake oh, snake. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. Well, I have described, uh, by the way, you know, counting on government to solve your problems. Yeah. It's kind of like saying, let's get a pet rattlesnake and let loose in the house. It'll kill the mice It'll for kill us. kill the mice, that's right. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Or it could <laughs> bite you. Why would he do that? I'm, I'm feeding him. It's in his nature. That's hey, right. uh, everybody, hold on. we got to hit our top of the hour break. Paul, Eric the Duck, Hugh, y'all stay put. Broadcasting from the Riverside Chevrolet Master Control Center, this is WACV Kusada, News Talk 93.1 FM. When it's Chevy, it's Riverside. With SRN News, I'm John Scott. Ukraine has lowered the military conscription age from 27 to 25. It's an effort to replenish its depleted ranks after more than two years of war following Russia's full-scale invasion. 
North Korea says it has tested another new hypersonic intermediate range missile powered with solid propellants as it continues to expand its nuclear and missile program while tensions deepen with its neighbors and the United States. South Korea and Japan have detected the missile launch from the North's capital region on Tuesday. On Wall Street, stocks are moderately higher following their worst day in weeks. The Dow is up 53 points and the Nasdaq adding 85 points. This is SRN News. Biden has started tracking Christians like cattle. Yes, you heard it right. He pressured banks to tag transactions for certain keywords. One of them is Holy Bible. That's a horrifying and creepy attack on our religious freedoms. It's made possible by a digital financial system that makes you a sitting duck. But you do have other options. I recommend a physical gold IRA from Birch Gold Group. I'm Lance Wallnow, a news analyst, a best-selling author, and evangelical leader to people who cherish their financial independence. The Precious Metals IRA can help you avoid the scrutiny of Biden's anti-Christian bureaucracy while also preserving your retirement savings. To find out more, get your free info kit on gold IRAs by texting the word FAITH to 989898. Birch Gold Group is the only gold company I trust. Get their free info kit and see how a gold IRA can help you. Text FAITH to 989898. There are no strings attached. So text FAITH to the number 989898 right now and take action to protect your own prosperity. The Johnny Adams Law Firm. They want you to stay safe on the road. Please don't text and drive. Get to your destination safely. Your family and friends will thank you. From the Johnny Adams Law Firm. Well, hi, everybody. Some much cooler air is funneling into the state, which means some cool days and some cold nights ahead. Today's high temperature in the upper 60s is way below normal for this late in the season. A little breezy, good bit of sun. Tonight, mostly clear and chilly. Overnight low temperature falls to about 43. I think we'll be in the upper 60s again on Thursday and Friday with lots of sun. In fact, uh, the nights on Thursday and Friday night will fall to the upper 30s. Then a little warmer over the weekend. From the National Tropical Weather Conference, this is Rich Thomas for Blue Water Broadcasting. We're redesigning financial freedom at CBNS Bank. Make purchases at participating stores and restaurants using your CBNS Bank debit card through your mobile devices with mobile wallet. Charges and fees may apply for your cellular service provider. Contact your service provider for more information. Member FDIC. From the Blue Water Broadcasting News Center, here's today's top stories. Montgomery police are investigating a shooting that left a man seriously injured Tuesday afternoon. The unidentified man was shot near Chuck E. Cheese in the 1200 block of Eastdale Circle around 4.40 p.m. The victim was taken to a local hospital for treatment of life-threatening injuries. An Alabama man has been added to the U.S. Marshals' 15 most wanted fugitives list. 28-year-old Ladarius Rahim Fantroy of Repton is a suspect in a double homicide that occurred last summer. Fantroy allegedly shot and killed a 10-year-old boy and the boyfriend of the child's mother. The Alabama Department of Corrections Commissioner announced the new Elmore Specialized Men's Prison Facility is almost 25% complete on Tuesday. There are almost 500 construction workers on the site, and that number is expected to double this summer. The plan is to have the prison completed by May 2026. From the Blue Water Broadcasting News Center, I'm Sky Mosley. The Heria 2 offers the finest entertainment in Montgomery with cruises on the Alabama River each weekend. Start your weekend with the Friday Night Family Dinner Cruise. Enjoy a delicious meal with dessert and cocktails as you dance to the live entertainment. Saturday, take in the scenic sunset cruise with stunning views and more entertainment. End your weekend with the Blues Cruise Sunday evening. Relax and listen to the sounds of local jazz artists as you sip on craft cocktails. Book your cruise on the Harriet 2 today at funinmontgomery.com. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368, an equal housing lender. Honey, wake up. <sighs> what? I, I think something's burning. Mm, I don't smell anything. I'm going to go check. <laughs> 
Each year, over 65,000 American homes suffer a fire due to an electrical problem. Is your home safe? You can't be sure unless you call Crosby Electric, your exclusive provider of current safe, the world's foremost home diagnostic system. Crosby Electric will send a specially trained electrician to your home. Using high-tech equipment, they'll check your hidden wiring, panel box, light switches, and electrical outlets to make sure your home is safe. Well, it appears that uh, we found the culprit. Faulty wiring. Oh, I should have had it checked. Just be thankful everyone's okay. For an in-home no-obligation assessment, visit CrosbyElectric.com. Don't just think it's safe. Know it's safe. Know you Tall Prune Masters, the professional pruners with over 30 years of experience, and that's all they do. To find out how you can get your hedges professionally pruned, call 220-2200 for a free estimate. Prune Masters, 220-2200. The views and opinions of the following program are solely those of the host and other contributors. These do not necessarily represent those of Liberty Acquisitions 825, Blue Water Broadcasting, its management staff, or any advertisers. It's time for Montgomery's Conversational Radio Show. It's news and views on News Talk 93.1 FM. To join the conversation, call 272-9228. Hey, Mitch! I don't mean to be telling tales out of school, but there's a fella in there who'll pay you $10 if you sing into his hands. I'm not here to make a record, you dumb cracker. They broadcast me out on the radio. Joey Clark. Welcome into the second hour of the program. Check us out online if you aren't already. Joey Clark Alive on YouTube or at the Joey Clark on Twitter X. Again, the number is 272-9228. That's 334-272-9228. Let's go right to the phones and talk to Paul. Hey, Paul, how you doing today? What up, Jake the Snake? <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Beta and Joey Clark, me amigos. Well, and Eddie stepped out of the studio and he's still not back yet, so maybe he got bit by a snake out back or something. Well, it wouldn't be nothing but a little old grass snake if it did, and it would die. Like they die so, after uh, biting? If it bit Eddie, it would. Oh, yeah, oh, fair enough. That is true. <laughs> oh, um, I've been in and out of the woods all my life. Uh, younger, I was in the woods probably more than what I was in the backyard. But uh, long story short, uh, most of the time you walk up even on a young rattler, there's always going to be the covering that they blend in with. But uh, uh, even a small rattler that doesn't have many rattlers developed yet will usually rattle its tail against leaves. Uh, now, I have heard for probably 15, 20 years now that a Mexican won't chase you. Now, back when I was in my probably about probably about mid-20s, I was walking down a dirt road, and I kept hearing something over in the ditch that was just kind of keeping pace with me. Well, I didn't think nothing about it, and then it, after a few minutes, it just kind of like, what in the world is that? So I walk over the edge of the ditch, look down in it, and see what it was that was pacing me. Mm -hmm. And there was a nice fat moxican that uh, sat there, and started trying to come up the embankment with his head raised up. I'm like, hmm. I just kicked some gravel down on him and went on about my business. Well, next thing I know, I'm hearing that same sound. I walk over there again. He done made it part way back up the bank, so I pick up a handful of rocks and I pepper him with it. Well, this went on for probably a ten minute walk. Go. Oh. This time when I this this time when I walked over to the bank, I didn't find me a good stick. I was gonna whop him with it, convince him to go on about his business. Well he done made it to the top of the bank and when I got there there he was with his head up. So I just stepped back and made the made made made, made the length of the stick worthwhile and I gave him a good whopping. Well he didn't like that none at all either. He come on up out the bank after that. He had a confrontation, he and I. 
And needs to say, he got the worst end of the deal. I finally broke the stick on him and just took him and flipped him across the ditch in the woods with what was left of the stick. Mm. Now, probably less than 10 years ago, I'm back in the woods and uh, gathering up some wood for firewood for a camp. <clears throat> I walked right through there maybe 10 or 15 minutes prior had my hatchet with me on one hip, machete on the other hip, and I was slinging the firewood that I was gathering out to a clearing. It was a real thick brush area, and when there was a clear spot, and I was just slinging it through instead of having to carry it all the way back around. Mm-hmm. Well, I followed the path that I had walked in on. You would never believe what was hanging off of a low-hanging branch with its mouth open. A nice little copperhead that was probably about an inch and a half in diameter, mm-hmm. about 18 to 20 inches long, and it had their limb weighted down. It just had its sail, mouth a, a gape and all that, too? Ooh. Yes, it did. Needless to say, Paul just ever so gradually pulled his machete, and as he got close enough, he just made a nice slice, slicing whack, let him hit the ground. I felt like that snake was waiting on me to walk back by, and he was going to pop me. Probably so if he's hanging like that, but, uh, you know, with that machete, it's all in the wrist, as you know, Paul. I'm no scientist, but I've heard they're very territorial. Well, he wasn't too territorial after the fact that he bit <laughs> the edge of that machete. <laughs> I guess y'all could just call me Machete from now on, right? Machete Paul. <laughs> machete Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Later, my brother. See you, Later, man. Paul. Man, I like that guy. Let's go to T-Spear. Hey, T-Spear. Hey, T-Spear. Hey, there. I hate snakes. I'll be the first one to be. Um, hang on. There, that may be a little bit better. Um, to me, the better snake is the dead one. I have raised Karen Terriers for over 30, 35 years now. And um, my last... I have one now that is my service dog, but my last briefing, Anglin and Gray caught a snake in the backyard underneath the deck and between the two of them. And these are 14-pound dogs. Gray would bark and jump up and down in front of the snake to get its attention, and Anglin would go in behind her and pick, uh, grab the snake by the neck and whip it across the uh, mm-hmm. pylons of the deck. Angling would drop the snake, Gray would, and turn its attention to Angling, and Angling would start jumping up and down and barking to get its attention, and Gray would go and do the same thing, and they did that until that snake was dead. Mm. Unbelievable watching those two dogs work, knowing exactly what they needed to do, even though they were never raised around snakes. The best product I can recommend people get, and I sprinkle it around my yard, especially in the spring and early summer, is called either snake scram or snake. It doesn't hurt the creature. It's uncomfortable for the snake to slither across. Yep. Hmm. Which makes okay. it really good for the inside or for right around your for your window opening. Um, it just them away. I realize they're supposed to be some good snakes. The better, the best snake to me is a dead one. A lot of people think that. Yeah, um, uh-huh. I, kind of I, I admit I have a like a visceral fear, but it's kind of like inbuilt. The same way your dogs knew what, what to do to each spear. Like some stuff is just hardwired. Mm-hmm. So you know, I've I've held non poisonous snakes and stuff like that before, and it, it's. At one part, cool because you're like, man, look how cold and like smooth, smooth and, skin. Yeah. and the muscle, it's just pure muscle there. Like it is fascinating, but then you're also like, okay, even this little python here could just you know grab a hold of me, and that ain't gonna feel good. Number one, but there's something about those big old like vipers in particular that just it's something, yeah, primordial in the back of the brain where you're yeah. like, mm 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 mm, you are my enemy. You got it. Well, um, I'm I'm just not going to be a random. And long handled moppers make really good snake picker uppers because then you can take it and and right behind the neck and squeeze it good and hard, and then you can take it and throw it out of your yard. Little grippers. 
Yep. Yep. That way you don't have to touch it. And yes, I am absolutely terrified of snakes. Um, absolutely terrified of them. Well, it doesn't like, show. <laughs> yeah, it seems like you're ready to go. But I appreciate the call, T Spear. Thank you, T Spear. Thank you much, guys. Y'all take care. You too. Bye. Now, did anybody mention the rattlesnake rodeo? The rattlesnake rodeo. I think they still have it down off Alabama. I they used to. Uh, I, th- I know they still have it. But anyway, I know we'd go back down there in the late 80s, and they would wrangle rattlesnakes for like a month. And they had them in a trailer, and it had clear plastic or glass sides all the way around. And yeah. Put them on display. Hundreds of rattlesnakes in there. And then, if I remember correctly, I know one time we ate some, so they probably sold the meat. But I remember they would auction off the skins, and it went to a good cause or whatever. Sure, sure. But, man, and them guys, would they would get in there and play with them rattlesnakes. No. They'd play with them? They, they would get one in front of them, you know, and do the whole thing where they make it strike and all that. Oh, yeah, and they pull their yeah. hand back. No, yeah. Not this guy. Mm-mm. I'm good. No. I'm good. In fact, I ate, we had the rattlesnake, and it was kind of bony. It wasn't, didn't really taste like nothing, but that was enough for me. And it shows you, like, the different types of people in this world. Oh, yeah. Like, the guys that will just go and mess with snakes. Yeah, I have friends like that. Oh, snakes. Or just handle I'll snakes. I'll be right over. Like, yeah, I've got this whole compound full of, you know, hundreds yeah. of different types of yes. venomous snakes. Here's a cobra. Watch me take it out of a barrel. Yes. It's like, what? how does oh. your brain work that way, man? I've seen the videos of the, the snake people that do the milking and all that. I couldn't it's do that. It's nuts. I just. I mean, they make bank. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To create that anti venom, but, but they ooh. always have a story too. Of yeah, this one time I messed yeah. up a little bit and he got me. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. He got you. It's still amazing, by the way. You know, it applies to like the crocodile hunter, like yeah. Steve Irwin. It really is amazing the way that guy went out after all the stuff he used to do, handling crocodiles and snakes and stuff. It's a damn stingray, right? Yeah. That takes him out. Yep. Like, what in the horror? That's just. I think the uh, Irwin family, by the way, is back. Uh, doing a show or something. Oh, they do. Like uh, the son, I believe the son does one, um, and he's just much like his dad. Yeah. Uh, and good for them, man. Um, Did you ever have somebody like that would bring exotic animals to the school? Yeah, usually one of us in Highland Gardens. <laughs> right. We usually found a snake on the way to school. And... No, but there, I remember one big presentation at St. Bede where it was, and we held it. It oh, was yeah. a massive uh, boa, and uh, we got a or python, mm-hmm. and it took a lot of us, like 10, 15 of us kids to hold it. <sighs> Like it was long, and but they brought birds and different lizards, all sorts of stuff out. But yeah, that's uh, always uh, Howling Garden School. It was more bring your own snake because if you, if some everybody was going to handle it, so you know people that um, that had those kind of things and really cared for them, they didn't bring them around Howling Garden Elementary at that time. Yeah, man, I'm like I'm good. I don't I don't need all that in my life. I, I, animals are fun. Like I, animals are fascinating. I'll put it that way. Some are unnerving. I like the one with fur and feather much better than just the skin. All right. Well, then you see folks who get like used to handling big cats or working with bears yeah. or working with wolves. And it's like you, you are madmen. Right. I, I, I like, I, again, it's one of those things I really appreciate they do it, but not me. Mm-mm. Not me. Mm-mm. I appreciate those people are there, though. No, I, did you ever watch that saga that came out a few years ago, a guy named Coyote Peterson who decided to get stung by, like, on purpose by all the, I seen the a most couple of painful the stings? Did, yeah. I've seen a couple he did, and that was hard to watch. Well, one I could relate to, the only one I could relate to, and I didn't ever do this as a kid, but of course, growing up in Alabama, you get in fire ants, and you oh, get yeah. bit. And fire ants, you know, just a few of them in your shoe, that doesn't feel good, but it's also like, eh, it's itchy, it's annoying, whatever. big ones? No, what he did with the fire ants is he went to somewhere in the south here, Mm -hmm. and he just stuck his hands in a fire ant hill for like 10, 20 seconds. And I'm like, that's, and actually said that was one of the most dangerous things he did, because when you let him sit there and just bite you, bite you, bite you, bite you. Imagine what his hands look like the next day. Yeah, they were swollen, huge, like mitts. Ooh. Yeah, (laughs) dude. But th- like that, that guy said he had to stop doing the, like he's going to yeah. get a neurological disease <laughs> from all this venom. He keeps putting well, them in. It was the guy, um, the guys that did jackass that, you know, they did that oh, kind yeah. of thing too. And they had that bee, some bee in Africa, they would let sting them. And <laughs> yeah. no, but they did worse things. Than oh, they that, did though. with the lions and they put the meat on I remember them. Remember the big guy the was going to you know let one loose and the guys wearing like the scuba Yes. Yeah, they did stuff to each other that was just like, I'm amazed like steve still alive. Crazy. Though he's completely sober now. Completely sober. Crazy story I read about him just a few minutes ago. He would not do, or he backed out of Bill, Bill Maher show, show. Because Maher wouldn't say, hey, I won't smoke pot while you're here. That's... What a jerk. Yeah, I think what it, a it is Maher's own room and own home, so to speak. But 
Dude, you have yeah. someone that's sober that we all publicly saw the battles he had oh, with sobriety, yeah. and you won't just say, hey, for the next two hours while you're here, I'll refrain from smoking the devil's lettuce? You're a piece of trash. Yeah, Mar just seems like an ornery old man at this point, honestly. The more I watch him, he doesn't seem like somebody who's interested in learning anything, and he's just kind of... Uh... Oh, it's yeah. yeah. I just I just really just... Those, I mean, do you remember the videos of, like, Steve-O doing all those whippets? Yeah. Like all those containers, I mean, we all con saw gas that. containers. Whoa. We all saw him try to commit suicide multiple occasions where he would say it's a stunt, but in reality, he looks back and he'll tell you, well, I was actually trying to kill myself. Yeah, he and, almost did it several times. Right. You can't, you can't refrain from smoking weed. You can't say, hey, dude, as a friend, as a professional, I appreciate you being here. I'll keep the devil's lettuce aside. Well, and then other people comment on that story saying, no, you have to be responsible for your own sobriety no matter what situation you're in. I get that, but at the same time, why do that? Like you invited me on. Could you, I'm a guest. Could you be courteous enough not to do that in front of me? Yeah. You could have a drink For in a front of me. a couple of hours. Yeah. Right. I just, I don't know. I just, that, show me what Bill Maher really is. And in other non-political news, uh, did you see the footage from this massive 7.5 earthquake? Oh, in Taiwan? Yeah. Yeah. So everybody's worried about, you know, the geopolitical things with Taiwan. And then this mother nature is like, hey, I'm Watch still this. in charge. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Whew. And like some of the stuff really is unnerving to watch. Yeah. I did you ever that. been in an earthquake? Uh, yeah, several times. Really? Yeah. Several Alaska. times. Alaska. Alaska's earthquake. Oh, Alaska. Alaska. Even in Turkey. In Turkey, yeah, you didn't, everything rock and roll there anyway. But in Alaska, my dad had, uh, had a massive heart attack. We were on the I think, 13th or the ninth floor of the hospital. And um, it was a couple of days after the heart attack. We we're all just gathering around. You know, and uh, the ba the building just kind of swayed. I mean, it wasn't like a jerky. It mm -hmm. was a sway. And uh, the look across the room, I've never felt so out of control. That's what everybody says. Like, you're just completely disoriented. You're just there for the ride. And, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was the scariest one to me. And I don't think it was that big of a quake. It was just the fact how that building just rolled. Well, and here's some footage uh, from Taiwan. I think this actually happened here. Let's, let's listen. Oh, wow. Look at that. Whoa, look at that thing leaning yeah, over. Then, uh... Entire buildings essentially tilted or on their yeah. sides, completely destroyed. Look at that, that building is sunk. Okay, here's, I guess, from a skyline view from one cam, like a weather cam. <laughs> that thing's getting shook. And, and that's another kind of earthquake... I've been in before where we weren't in a building, we were just in the house, and it was a very violent rocking, as if someone grabbed your house from the outside and just shook it. Yeah. And it only lasts maybe four, five, six seconds, but again, I've never felt like I've just no control over what's happening like that. Even in a tornado, you can theoretically run and hide in the ground. There's nothing you can do, man. And of course, the number one uh, advanced microchip manufacturer the Taiwan, uh, like, TSMC. Yeah, how's that building? Uh, they evacuated uh, workers, but they've now returned to some factories after Taiwan's strongest earthquake in 25 years. Uh, all personnel are safe, and those evacuated are beginning to return to their workplaces. And uh, so, essentially, the entire global, like, tech economy went, whew. Like, apparently, there wasn't too much destruction of those actual... Explain to me again why we only can build them there. Because everything I've heard is, oh, by the time we build a plant here, it's going to be so out of date. Yeah. Like, no, well, it, that's to, what do they call it? Uh, they call it the technology horizon, I believe. And to just be on the cutting edge of the technology horizon, you need billions. Not billions over 10 years. You need yeah. billions a year. Now. And Taiwan, of course, did this over. They made a very smart decision years ago to be the number one in this mm -hmm. south korea also gets fairly close uh but taiwan semiconductor manufacturing co is like the provider i get it but i just don't understand especially after what just happened mm -hmm. what if we had none all of a sudden well and I, I think i've got another story here where you know we're supposed to be uh you know given the chips act everybody's happy oh, yeah. about it the government's spending money so of course things are getting done mm -hmm. intel shares fall intel mm -hmm. After a company reveals seven billion dollar operating loss in their chip foundry business, this is what I mean by that mm -hmm. tech horizon. So, okay, can Intel survive sinking seven billion in one year to try to catch up? Because that's probably what caused this. Not without guaranteed government contracts, <laughs> right? 
So it said it's foundry business recorded an operating loss of $7 billion in 23, 2023 on sales of $18.9 billion. So they're selling a lot of them. So they're just not making money? There's not making money. That's a wider loss than the $5.2 billion Intel reported in its foundry business in 2022 on $27.5 billion in sales during that time. It's the first time Intel has disclosed revenue totals for its foundry business alone. Historically, Intel has both designed its own chips as well as done its own manufacturing and reported final chip sales to investors. Other American semiconductor companies such as NVIDIA and AMD design their chips but send them off to Asian foundries, often Taiwan's TSMC, for manufacturing. And so you would hope, oh, okay, Intel's already in the game of manufacturing, but, but it also it's, makes a, think, um, it's not exactly a money maker at this point. Is it? Um, why, why is, there, is everything go, going to Asia because that's where the technology is that can do it? And, the, and the expertise. Money. No, I think it's I think it's the tech, the investment, and the expertise. I don't pretend to be an expert on this. I'm just some jackass who reads the news. But it seems to be that it's one of those industries where you have such a head start. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly something uh, that's easy. Should we be able to do it? Yes, I think yeah. in this country the fact that we're not. It's not just chip manufacturing; it's everything. We're making a lot of excuses yeah. not to get things done good point. because we've got it too good. Good point, buddy. But, but again, uh, today or yesterday, that should have made the world go, hey. Maybe we need more than one place. Let's go to line one. You're on there. Who's this? Hey, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just naive. But, you know, years ago, I lived in California. In, and, you know, remember the valley and uh, what was it called? It was the, the Silicon Valley. Yeah, yeah, Silicon Valley. So did we pretty much dismantle all of our chip manufacturing? Well, short it, essentially. So that. Clean. Those, or did they get so green they didn't want their water dirtied up by the nasty That's chip. what I'm wondering. It's just, what's, what's I, I'm not certain off the top of my head. I know they did offshore it, mostly to Taiwan and South Korea. I mean, we're still, I think, number one in the world, Silicon Valley is, in terms of design. Mm -hmm. um, but actually get it but actual manufacturing, yeah, the, the capacity is not there anymore. And we're, we're, okay. we're years okay. behind. And, okay, also, that was Texas at one point, where Texas Instrument right. was. I thought That's they right. were in the game. That's, I forgot right. all about that. And well, then here's the thing, because I, I look at everybody with a jaunted eye. You tell me you're losing money like that, and uh, this country's not even in that game. I question if the money's going where you're saying it's going. And I, I wonder too. who in our government, who we can't trust, I too. is responsible for checking stuff like that out. Oh, yeah. Because $8 million feels to me like you could build a whole new plan and hire people <laughs> All right. and train well, and this is most I mean, everything. It's not just the chip industry. It's almost every industry. We are just a so-called service or skills-based economy, an information-based economy, and we've offshored most stuff to places like Asia. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's, I think, been a bad move. It, it saved some money in the short run, um, but I don't think the, the long-run uh, plan was fully thought through. Right. Oh, I agree with that, but I go back to what we just said about California and Texas. It's not like they weren't ever in the game. I cannot believe they can't jump fully in the game again and dominate. Well, that would be my hope, but that's just my gut sense as an American. Oh, oh that's right. another part. Another part of the country you know about over there in Durham, the Carolinas, over there by Duke. Uh, they, had a, a, they had that world going for a minute, didn't they? I think for a little bit. Yeah, I think but... so. Uh, again, most of this was high-level uh, design stuff, too. And so, I don't know, the actual chip foundries. And I'd imagine this is a very complex business, and none of us, I believe, are in that business. So we guy. probably are talking out of our asses. Not this guy. Uh, I, one, one other thing. Whatever happened to Japan? Was Japan not a big chip manufacturer at one point? I do not remember. I know they did the CDs. That's the uh, I mean, I thought the days of the Sonys and people like that, I thought they were always into that stuff, too. Well, it depends on what types of uh, chips you're talking about, I think. Okay. Okay, I get that. And see, if we're talking about the chips that just helps your microwave out. I get that something like that's been mined out to everybody and their mama. But if we're, and if we're talking about the chips for your car, I would hope that we'd be smart enough to keep those types of things. And we're talking about the chips, say, that Apple relies on for their latest uh, MacBook models. Okay, see, I put that with the micro Dude, I put that with the microwave. That's just junk to me. Right. Uh, I think the car, I think the car and your and a spaceship and, and things like that are a little bit more important than your cell phone.
Oh, yeah. Well, okay. and, uh, and you, you know, companies like NVIDIA and AMD, they're huge. And, like, you know, I've been looking into how to upgrade our streaming, and a lot of it centers around their GPUs and their CPUs, and they're brilliant designs, but, again, it's made in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And uh, how to correct this, I am really not certain. The ideal situation would be we don't have a war and frickin ch with China over Taiwan. Honestly, I don't think anybody really wants it at mm. this point. And you actually continue to produce this stuff until other nations, including our own, can come online. But nobody's trying. If you ever, have you ever talked to your friend who runs that uh, repair place? XI Repair, Jonathan? Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever got his opinion on who... We've talked in the past about it, but not lately. Because unfortunately, I only know it from the entertainment game. Mm -hmm. and, but I'm thinking there was an American AM. You said you looked at AMD. I, I've been looking into how to get better kick butt computers to run a stream. Yes. Right. There was a lot of high end AMDs. However, mm -hmm. I think they went from Texas to China. You may want to check on AMD. Yeah, I think most of it's outside the country. At least that's the story I've heard. But I appreciate the call, Urbanite, as always. All right, take care. See you, bud. 272-9228. Again, that's 334-272-9228. we got to hit a break here. But first, this part of the program brought to you by Alabama Home Mortgage. And there at Alabama Home Mortgage, Kim Williams and her team are ready to help you out, especially that lovely and talented lady we call Madeline Cannon. Man, I saw a picture of her family for Easter. Yeah. Just a gorgeous family. They really are. Great really folks, are. great, great local folks there at Alabama Home Mortgage. So whether you're looking to buy a home or refinance a home, Alabama Home Mortgage can help you out. And Eddie, talk to me here. Talk to me here about like interest rates. Yes, they're higher than they have been for the last decade or two. Yes, they have. But if you're renting right now, your interest rate's 100%. You'll never have anything. You'll never own anything in that, that property. So while you can go in now, and especially with VA, you can go in with nothing down. But while interest rates are up, don't let that hold you back. Your personal growth might be, hey, it is my time to buy a house. I'm tired right. of renting. It's time for my family to come together as one under one roof. Well, and you think about it. What, it's a 20 or 30-year mortgage. Exactly. You do 15, 20, or 30. But the thing is, you, you're going to have that 15, 20, 30 years to refinance. Right. So exactly. don't let a high interest rate scare you away. And, and honestly, let me ask you this. What interest rates you paying on your car? Most people don't recognize that. Right. I'm telling you. And you cannot, well, I won't say you can't, but you can refinance your home a lot easier than you can refinance your car. And even now, if you're looking to refinance, say to take cash out to reinvest in your property or maybe your family, it could mm -hmm. be you're trying to get credit card debt off your exactly. back. It doesn't matter. The interest rate's a little bit higher. Again, there's always an opportunity uh, to make it work later. And again, this is money that you built up. And yep. if you really need it, you got to think about your own situation, your own economy. Exactly. And that's why uh, Kim and Madeline are so great at Alabama Home Mortgage. They'll literally sit down, get to know you, your goals and refining or owning a home. That number, 567-4223. That's 567-4223. You can always visit them on the web at my Alabama Home Mortgage. Dot com. There is a difference yep. in mortgage companies like Kim and Madeline. Prove that to you today. NMLS number 1586368, an equal housing lender. Want to carry News Talk in your pocket? Download the News Talk 93.1 app from the App Store, available on iPhone and Android. Never miss a moment. Download now. Make 2024 the year you break away from the chain stores and join us here at Adams Drugs. We value your business and want to provide you the best customer service at the lowest possible price. We've been serving up excellent customer service here in the River Region for over 62 years. I made the swap to Adams Drugs and I couldn't be happier. Having a job and then getting three kids to all of their activities keeps me busy. I don't have an hour to waste waiting on a prescription. At Adams, they know me and my family. I get in and out in minutes, and when I can't get by Adams, they'll bring the prescription right to my door. What are you waiting for? Come in to Adams Drugs and let us earn your business. Our friendly and personal staff will talk with you and answer any questions you may have about your prescriptions. Your satisfaction is our number one goal. Visit us at adamsdrugs.net for the location nearest to you. Adams Drugs is your local independent Health Mart pharmacy. Health Mart, taking the time to listen and care. This is your roving reporter, and today I am talking with an elk. Uh, hey man. Mr. Elk, I was just wondering, what do elk do to take care of their money? 
Well, like most smart folks, we call David Erdit. You mean Alabama's most favorite asset preservationist? That's him, man. We call him up at 334-279-7431 or 205-479-0839. I see. Yes, he is our preferred money man. The money man with the money plan. Uh, you've been paying attention. Well, could you give us those numbers one more time? 334-279-7431 or 205-479-0839. And I just want to try to give you a heads up, man. Oh, what's that? I'm uh, not an elk. Not an elk, huh? Well, then, pray tell, what are you? Ah, uh, Knights of Columbus. <laughs> I am not even going to make a comment. Uh, well, the baby liked it. When your tax refund comes, put it on the floor and walk on it. Revitalize the look and feel of your home with new floors from Prattville Carpet. With faster and better service than the big box stores and luxury vinyl planks starting as low as $4.99 per square foot, you'll enjoy that tax refund turned flooring every single day. Hi, I'm Ray Bowles from Prattville Carpet. If you're looking for waterproof carpet, hardwood, laminate, vinyl plank, or ceramic tile, call us today for your free measurement. Dial 285-8117 or visit PrattvilleCarpet.com. Prattville Carpet, we're more than just carpet. Are you tired of the mainstream media's biased reporting? Do you want to stay informed on the news that really matters to you? Look no further than 1819 News. In 1819 News, we bring you the latest in Alabama news, politics, sports, culture, and more. We've assembled a team of journalists with Alabama values dedicated to the truth and the truth alone. Visit us at 1819news.com today. That's 1819news.com. Subscribe to our newsletter. Honest News, Alabama Values. When I'm walking in the door, the biggest fish in the room, I'm saying, hey, I'm to the boy, let's take a picture. Because with business, it's your association. Shadrick Tootle runs Tootle Boy Sports. He is perhaps the most charismatic person I've ever met, and I talk to him about how he uses that charisma to grow his business. Listen to What's Working Saturday noon or find us online at whatsworkingcam.com. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368, an equal housing lender. Rich Thomas Weather, a service of Wiley Sanders Truck Lines, where dump truck drivers are in demand. Wiley Sanders is on the grow. We need dump truck drivers now. Call 855-77-9785. Rich Thomas Weather. Well, hi, everybody. Some much cooler air is funneling into the state, which means some cool days and some cold nights ahead. Today's high temperature in the upper 60s is way below normal for this late in the season. A little breezy, good bit of sun. Tonight, mostly clear and chilly. Overnight low temperature falls to about 43. I think we'll be in the upper 60s again on Thursday and Friday with lots of sun. In fact, uh, the nights on Thursday and Friday night will fall to the upper 30s. Then a little warmer over the weekend. From the National Tropical Weather Conference, this is Rich Thomas for Blue Water Broadcasting. For the lowest prices around on flooring and DIY flooring installation supplies, Budget Floors and More is your new best friend. Luxury vinyl plank, carpet, ceramic tile, floor installation supplies, and more with prices lower than the big box stores. Budget Floors and More, Hunter Lane, across from Delray to Publix. It's Johnny from Sinclair's on Bond Road. We've been in business almost 30 years. Sinclair's East. I think if you hadn't tried us, you should give us a try. We've got a great menu, offered anything from chicken fingers, wings, salads, fajitas. At lunchtime, we do great country lunch with different vegetables and different meats every day. Sinclair's, where you get great sandwiches and our daily meat at three special at lunch, two great pasta, chicken, steaks, and seafood for dinner. Our most popular items are, we got a soup called she crab soup, which is extremely popular. We've got a bunch of pasta dishes, which people love. Mediterranean chicken is my favorite. Sinclair's. We do live music, light stuff on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and then on Fridays and Saturdays, maybe three-piece bands or four-piece bands. Come and see why Sinclair's has seen lesser restaurants come and go over the years. Johnny Sullivan Sinclair's at the corner of Vaughn and Taylor. Find them on Facebook at Sinclair's East. Google search Sinclair's Restaurant. Sinclair's.
Now you can add the power of digital advertising to the number one reach of radio. Let Blue Water's 20 years of local advertising and marketing success show you how. Grow your business with a complete suite of digital solutions combined with the reach of the most listened to radio group in the River Region. Call us or go to BlueWaterBroadcasting.com to find out how we can increase your return on investment. Blue Water Broadcasting, local folks helping local business. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368, an equal housing lender. What's your biggest investment? More than likely, it's your home. So treat it that way when you hire a painting contract. With PBS Painting, there are no gimmicks, no $99 specials. Just quality painting and someone who treats your home with the same respect that you do. At PBS Painting, we have been painting for years and look forward to many more years to come. With PBS Painting, the job gets prepped properly, whether it's cleaning, scraping, or priming. We always use quality products, which is a must for a quality paint job. So if you're looking for a painter that doesn't need upfront money and is on the job at all times, then please give me a call. Scott Bowers and PBS Painting, 294-5122. That's PBS Painting, 294-5122. Look at some of our work on Facebook at PBS Painting Montgomery. On FM, on your smartphone, and online, the River Region's most trusted voice, News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Joey Clark. Welcome back. To do some views in the afternoon, or as we're calling it online, Joey Clark Alive. You can watch on Twitter X at the Joey Clark. That's right. Or just search Joey Clark Live. That's the name of the YouTube channel. Like and subscribe if you could. I'm learning that he really can't read too much of the comments because I'm well, it's not that surprising. People will react like i played i put up a short video of us talking about christopher hitchin okay people only heard the part you said the oh, first crap. five seconds oh, crap. yeah and they're all like he he, he no he, he didn't change i'm like guys listen to the whole 30 seconds but i'm learning folks will make a judgment like that yeah it and maybe that's the problem with a lot of online media like, I, have heard, oh, I don't need to hear that while we're doing the show i like the comments it's fun to watch oh sure but yeah when you put out the clips don't don't comment on the comments because they're just they're they're brutal. Don't get a well, fight. Actually, with I said, what do you mean lie? I said he remained an atheist till he died and shared his last final book, which I own. And the guy actually went, "Sorry, I just saw the first ten seconds, and reacted." He, but he actually apologized he to me. Up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to Sam. Hey, Sam. Uh, you, uh, hey, Joey. Thanks for taking my call, brother. How you doing? Um, uh, I'm doing. You know, I'm doing better every day. Doing pretty good. Uh, I feel like a fool. I had a hot take, a comment, and it just completely gotten away from me. Oh, it's, uh, oh damn! Yeah, one day, I know, man. It was it was such a brilliant piece of. Work. You've been watching uh, women's basketball at all, Eddie? And I were talking about that Iowa LSU game. Good game. Uh, Troy, Troy ladies, Troy ladies are in their final four in the uh, Sun Belt Conference. So, oh. I mean, you know, but but I'm just saying, it's always. Um, I haven't seen it in a couple of years, but I, I miss it. Uh, you know, I uh, used to enjoy seeing it live up here at the uh, the new arena um, in Troy. Um, oh, okay. I'm, damn, I, I feel like a fool. Oh, well, let me throw this at you. Okay. I made a joke in your chat room. Uh, uh -oh. The chat room on YouTube is always a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, you know, because it's me. Um, <laughs> uh, the holiness. All this talk, not talk about snakes. No one's mentioned the holiness church yet. You know, if you want some advice, practical advice on handling snakes, that's where you go. Hello. Uh, is that the snake yeah. handlers? Yes, yeah, the snake handlers. That's what they do, man. And mm. you'll see them. They'll, they'll occasionally, they'll take a bite. Mm -mm. Uh, mm -mm. You're not, like I said, you're not, not supposed to this turn mm -mm. Not going to do it. Nope. Nope. But they, sur no, they survive. They, they, but you'll see where the venom will run up the arms because it stays close to the surface. Mm. And it, the flesh will rot. So you'll have these permanent uh, 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 flesh tattoos where the venom ran up under your skin. Oh, yeah. It's Mm -mm. I've seen, yeah. uh, I went down the rabbit hole with those on uh, YouTube one time. and I'm, Yeah. I'm out. 
Yeah. Well, and we no, actually have a, a comment from that comment section from the Romex angle. He says, Eddie definitely has the head shape of a non-poisonous, but Joey has <laughs> them <laughs> wide jowls, so I think he's venomous. Yeah. He yeah. No, been... I've heard his words. Uh, I can Mr. be. Clark, yeah, your, your show, you have a you have an active career. You, know, you have a good times in your chat room. Um, people do. Uh, that's it, man. I, Appreciate it. I feel like it. Uh, I'll, I'll do better next time. It's all, all right, good. Jamie. Thanks, hey, brother. <laughs> Yeah, and then Mark Humby's asking, Eddie, do you invite Joey on these fishing trips? No. Yeah, the answer is no. Joey doesn't fish. I mean, like, I would. Like Joey you generally to go to some nerd conference. I'm, like, well, I don't nerd. Also, this, again, this was for your son's birthday. Oh, yeah, kind of. Like, and we spend enough time together. You need time with family and friends, other friends. You know what a really good moment was? And I know I'm going to get a ton of backlash, but I don't care. 2.30 mm -hmm. in the morning, we're on that boat. Me, my son, and my father, uh, my mom's husband, Jack. We all got a bush light in our hand. That's a good time. Good times right there. How, who's going to give you a hard time about that? People. Oh, Joe. Well, the women? No, just people in general. I've, I've learned to, I've got to not share so much. Ah, yeah. Yeah. It's hard. Right. I don't, you know, I like to talk. Well, I share a lot and nobody really says anything to me. Yeah. I'll start sending my stuff your way then. <laughs> okay. That. Yeah. Chickens. <laughs> Two seven two nine two two eight. No, but we could go go fishing I'd sometime. Love to. Honestly, if you want to go fishing. One of the, and I was telling you guys off air, uh, me, you, and Sky, I would love to do that one evening. And it's it's completely different night fishing. Mm -hmm. It's a hundred and ten thousand percent different. But the action is great, and it's just more relaxed. It would make great content, yeah. incredible content. I wouldn't want to be the guy that has to edit it though. Well, and then it would, <laughs> ironically enough, be a fish out of water story for Joey. Very much. I hadn't so. done that since I was a child. You could call it that. See, yeah. see how you are with those words? Yeah. Let's words. go to line one. You're on there. Who's this? Joey, Sam. Hey, I remember, Sam. I know, man. But this is, okay, here's the deal. It was on the uh, chips. Uh, a couple years ago, I saw a thing on PBS. Hush, microwave. She back up. thing on P P PBS about the making of chips in Silicon Valley. Every couple of years, you know, the technology increases. Uh, the, you know, they're, they're lab. They're, the facilities are expensive, they're clean, and um, what happened, the people that saw how to make them would go off and make it and start another business as the technology progressed. So every few years, you'd have more uh, more and more advanced ship makers, and they said uh, a lot like a lot of it went overseas, and mm -hmm. we still, but it just, as the technology is, it, it doubles in strength every couple of years, you got to, uh, you're continually upgrading and advancing, and um, uh, I don't think they've let off the gas. I just think there's just that much either. demand. But that, that was my two cents on that, bro. The whole thing on the chips, a lot of money, a lot of investment, take a lot of time to get the uh, plan up and running. Well, um, I appreciate you calling back, Sam. Thank thanks, you. Sam. Thank you, Jim. And then uh, Kim Mayton is commenting, saying, as long as it wasn't a Bud Light. I had one in the other night. You did? I was at a bar. I sure did. And Because, and, again, I've ordered Bud Light my whole life. So I don't think about the controversy. I just go up to the bar and Bud Light. Three people looked at me when I said Bud Light. And I went, yeah, I'm rolling with it, Bud Light. I think that guy's got a little sugar <laughs> in his tank. Well, I wasn't going to. If you know what I mean, he's a little I, light in his loafers. I felt like if I had changed it then, it would have made me look a little bit weaker. So I was like, <laughs> right. Bud Light, I'll drink that right. Bud Light. Well, he, he you might. pour that in a glass one? <laughs> he might putt from the rough, but uh, at least he's confident about it. Actually, I think that's all I demand of folks. Like, do what you want. At least be confident about it. I don't care. It's just yeah. the 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 other stuff where it's like everybody else must bend to uh, be nice to me. And it's like, no, they don't. In fact, a lot of folks will be mean to you because they like you. Yeah, that's, especially dudes. That's how dudes are. Yeah. But I had Bud Light. I had a gallon of Bud Light the other day. Mm -hmm. Slap out bait and tackle. We're out of bush light. So I had to get a gallon of Bud Light. No big deal. You got some at... A Bud Light at Slap Out Bait and Tackle? That's where you get draft beer in order and slap out. Sounds pretty good. It's a wonderful location. Uh, you got to, you know, help me, though. I'm one of these city boys. and You'd I have to stay in the car. I'd have to stay in, the, have to stay in the car. <laughs> that, that happened to me once with Parks and Rec. <laughs> or we went to essentially, it was like a, a black establishment. Yeah. Like, you didn't see white folks in there. but And the whole truck was black except for me working at Parks and Rec. And... I'm like, I'm not that hungry. I'll just stay in the truck. And one of the guys looked at me and goes, boy, look, you see that right over there? Then the projects, get your ass out of the truck and come in with us. And then the hotcakes were great. Right. So yeah. I'll just stay in the truck, fellas. Yeah. Lock the doors, please. Like, Stanley got pissed at me. <laughs>
I'm like, fine, <laughs> Sam. Hysterical. It's fine, man. <laughs> like, I really wasn't hungry. Was like, you ate that day, though, didn't you? I did. No, it was good. I'd go back. <laughs> though I never really find myself in downtown Montgomery these days. I might. Yeah. Do you? Uh, once in a while, <clears throat> excuse me, once in a while when we want to go have some delicious Chris hot dog. But other oh, than right. that, very rarely. But I remember one time, that's not too many years ago, back in the 90s, me and my buddy of mine were driving around. And we got pulled over by MPD, and we were in a rough neighborhood. We were buying houses. But anyway, he said, uh, you boys down here buying some crack. And the, my buddy, who was larger than me, goes, look at us. We are way too fat to be on crack. Are you serious? And the officer busted out laughing. He goes, all right. I mean, he was embarrassed. He left. <laughs> but my buddy, Sonny, was so pissed. He said, look at us. Right. Do we even look? And we were. We were both and pushing. Then you, and then you got the crack flight? Well, later on, yeah. yeah. Let's go to line one. You're on there. Who's this? Hello? Hello? Anybody there? Caller, are you there? Three, two, one. Well, call again. Play again. Might have been that police officer. Oh, He's probably a little embarrassed about it. He's like, wait, those fatties were actually <laughs> doing... Mm. Mm. How about this? Let's hit a quick break. Very quick one. Like 45-second right. break. Okay. And then we'll hopefully come back with Michael Cohen. Cool. Cohen's Electronics and Appliances. He may not know whether he's coming or going. But whether you're going to work or coming home, Greg Budell is there. Mornings, 6 till 9, and afternoons, 3 till 6. Only on News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. If you're new to Medicare, the ins and outs can be complicated. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, our local advisors are here to help answer your questions. And we're here to help you find a Medicare plan that fits your needs. Visit bcbsalmedicare.com or call 1-844-627-5612. Now, Medicare, that's focused on you. Blue Advantage is a PPO with a Medicare contract. Enrollment in Blue Advantage PPO depends on contract renewal. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368 and equal housing lender. When news happens, you'll hear about it first. The River Region's most trusted voice. News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Joey Clark. Coming up, folks, we're gonna be talking about a brand new study from Wallet Hub. I don't think I even told you about this, Eddie. There's a new study from Wallet Hub talking about which states have the highest tax burden and who has the lowest tax burden. Interesting. And it's cumulative. It's mm -hmm. like they they were able to score together property taxes, income taxes, excise sales taxes. Food taxes. Yeah, for instance, excise sales mm -hmm. tax. So we'll get into that list. In a second, who is the most taxed, okay. who is the least taxed, and where does Alabama land on all these? That'll be interesting. Let's first, though, uh, go to Michael Cohen of Cohen's Electronics and Appliances. Hey, Michael, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing pretty good. Well, uh, we... You know, yeah? Uh, I guess all those excise taxes, they pretty much are going to excise them from us anyway. Yep. Well, they get and their they're cut one way or the other. It's, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it, they tax you when you sell something. They tax you when you buy something. They tax you when you die. They tax you when you make money. Like, when? what do they not tax? Uh, Congress. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Good right. Point. I would like to see yeah. them tax yes. themselves. I'd pay good money for yeah, that. Yeah, I'd like <laughs> them to be on the same scale we're on. Yes. Yeah. That, that would be wonderful. But, uh, hey, how's it going at Cohen's today? It's going wonderful. Now, uh, do you still have folks stopping by asking about those great Speed Queen products? Man, people love the Speed Queens. Uh, it, it, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm amazed at the people that come in that know about them. I mean, it, it could be somebody that's 30 years old. It could be somebody that's 70 years old. And you kind of expect a 70-year-old to know about it because they grew up with it. Right. But the 30-year-old, you're just kind of shaking your head that, you know that they have have been able to to get to the young people and and make them aware of spending twice as much for a washing machine to get something that is actually built to last. 
Yeah, and you know, there's a lot of stuff where, and it's not just saying the appliances that are out there saying with the homes, it's like computers. I've seen this to where sometimes the stuff is not built to last a long time. And especially if you have a big family, you need a washing machine that can take that work. And, and, you know, some people get confused on washing. Uh, you know, they're, they're like, well, it's only, it's only seven years old or it's only eight years old. And, but then you, you ask them a few questions and it's like, well, we run the thing three times a day, every day. Because everybody's got to wash their own clothes. And and then I have teenagers that are getting 18 clothes messed up to wear one set. Yep. You, you know, so so when you think about how many cycles of laundry you do, the Speed Queen really becomes a way better value when you divide it out. Uh, because you are going to get better service. And, uh, we had one lady, uh, not that I want to talk about problems, but she's had problems with hers, mm. and she has two of them. And one of them that is in her main house, we finally figured out the problem. The problem is she's on a well, and she doesn't have a good filter system mm -hmm. on the well. And there's a filter before the washing machine that was catching all the dirt that came out of her well. And when the Speed Queen doesn't get the water flow like it's supposed to get it throws up a little error code and the error code was the water and, and we finally were there where we could witness that the water was not coming into the machine um uh, so anyway it's, it's kind of neat to to have a uh where you're chasing this thing and then you figure out that it's the internal plumbing system of the house that is clogged up with dirt from the well mm. Uh, so Speed Queen, is, Speed Queen has done wonderful for us. Well, and it's not just the great products like Speed Queen, folks, as you just heard there. It's the great service that Cohen's provides. So you can always go to thinkcohens.com, shop from home there at thinkcohens.com. But I really encourage you to stop by the Boulevard, 2515 Eastern Boulevard here in Montgomery. They're open 9 to 6, Monday through Friday, 9 to 4 on Saturdays. And be sure to find Michael or one of the team members and tell them that, hey, we heard Michael on the radio with the Joey and Eddie, those two idiots. <laughs> Could be three idiots. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> well, Don't leave me out. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. <laughs> well, I appreciate right. it, Michael. Thank you, bud. Thank y'all. Again, great guy, great sponsor oh, yeah. here of the program. That's Cohen's Electronics and Appliances. But, yeah, coming up here in just a few minutes, we're going to go into this uh, tax breakdown. What states have the heaviest burden of taxation? What states have the lowest burden? And where does Alabama fall in all of this? That's going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. I'd like to think that we're down at the bottom. Now, we were talking off air before we hit our top of the hour break that uh, – we both watched the Iowa LSU yeah. women's basketball game. Good game, dude. Uh, apparently, twelve million people watched. Now, and I'm that's not. A, be... I don't watch a lot of basketball, men or. I don't women's. either, but I watched. Always watched the finals. Uh, that's but I kept basketball. seeing all this noise about Caitlin Clark, and mm -hmm. she did not disappoint. Um, Raining down threes from right, like the average of her three point shots is just absurd. I'm like, is that Pistol Pete Maravich dude, reborn? She was dropping them. She was dropping. Yeah. Like, and it was a, it was kind of intimidation. A lot of it. Yeah. Especially, uh, and I, I even heard some um, ESPN guys saying, even when they miss threes constantly, it's the fact that they're letting you know that I have so much doubt in your defense, I'm going to hit from wherever, and you can't stop me. I'm going to throw the ball up from wherever. Even the LSU coach pregame is like, well, you know, you can't get emotional about Caitlin Clark hitting shots because she's going to hit them no matter what you yeah. do. It's like that's not a great game plan, but there are certain players where that's just the reality. That's true. And did you see? Uh, I'm sure that she's getting some hubbub about it now, where LSU folks were not around for the anthem. Even an LSU, I think the LSU, or excuse me, the Louisiana governor had said something about it. They weren't around for the anthem on the court. No, they went back to the locker room. Mm -hmm. And 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 LSU coaches said we do that on the regular. It has nothing to do with the anthem. It's just our part of our routine at this minute. Well, mark. Maybe it here. is. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but she is getting some pushback. Oh, well. Hey, we got to hit the spray. Break. Broadcasting from the Riverside Chevrolet Master Control Center, this is WACV Kusada, News Talk 93.1 FM. When it's Chevy, it's Riverside. 
with us are news. I'm John Scott. More severe weather is on the way. A major spring storm expected to drop more than a foot of snow in parts of New England on Wednesday. Well, heavy rains likely will soak the East Coast. Meanwhile, cleanup work continues in several states that were racked Tuesday by tornadoes and other severe weather. That was blamed for at least one death in Oklahoma. The future of the Royals and Chiefs in Kansas City now in question. When residents of Jackson County, Missouri voted against a sales tax to help pay for a new downtown ballpark and renovations to Arrowhead Stadium. Missy Testerman, a second grade teacher in Rogersville, Tennessee, has been chosen as the 2024 National Teacher of the Year. The Dow had four points and the NASDAQ adding 77. This is SRN News. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. Are you a victim of the timeshare trap and think there's no way out? I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, the original timeshare cancellation expert. And I'm here to tell you that there is a way out. We've helped over 30,000 families out of financial hardship by getting them out of bad timeshares. If your timeshare agreement goes on forever, if you were told timeshares are a great investment, or your maintenance fees will never go up, you have questions, we have the answers. At Wesley Financial Group, we're dedicated to helping timeshare owners get out of their financial nightmare. All you need to do is give my office a call. I will send you a timeshare exit information kit absolutely free, explaining how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Call now for your free timeshare exit information kit, 800-256-5533. That's 800-256-5533. 800-256-5533. Rich Thomas Weather, a service of Wiley Sanders Truck Lines, where dump truck drivers are in demand. Wiley Sanders is on the grow. We need dump truck drivers now. Call 855-77-9785. Well, hi, everybody. Some much cooler air is funneling into the state, which means some cool days and some cold nights ahead. Today's high temperature in the upper 60s is way below normal for this late in the season. A little breezy, good bit of sun. Tonight, mostly clear and chilly. Overnight low temperature falls to about 43 I think we'll be in the upper 60s again on Thursday and Friday with lots of sun. In fact, uh, the nights on Thursday and Friday night will fall to the upper 30s. Then a little warmer over the weekend. From the National Tropical Weather Conference, this is Rich Thomas for Blue Water Broadcasting. Web Bobo with Capital Tractor. Make this spring your most productive yet with our package deal on Kubota's L2501 DT Tractor with front loader, 5-foot cutter, and box blade, and 20-foot trailer at Special Spring Savings. Kubota and Capital Tractor, Montgomery, Brundage, and Greenville. 1819 News. Over a dozen subpoenas have been issued by the Morgan County District Attorney's Office in an effort to find out who leaked the body camera footage of an officer involved shooting in Decatur that killed Stephen Perkins. 1819 News aired that footage on its website last week. Now 19 people are being subpoenaed over the matter. They're being asked to appear at an April 8th hearing on a case that is underway against former officer Mac Marquette. I'll be back with more Alabama stories after this. I'm Amy Beth Shaver with Alabama Unfiltered Radio, and when I need the news and I need it fast, I turn to Andrea Tice and the Daily Detail. On my way in, it is the most convenient, best way for me to digest what's going on so that I can use it for our show. She tells you what's going on in Alabama that day first and fast. So listen to the Daily Detail with Andrea Tice. Don't miss out. The Daily Detail is available wherever podcasts are found. Police in Montgomery are investigating a shooting that occurred on Tuesday afternoon. One man was injured by gunfire. His wounds are life-threatening. The shooting occurred outside of the Eastdale Mall. Police in Northport are searching for suspects who used a stolen vehicle to break into a pawn shop and then steal the guns inside. The stolen vehicle was driven into the front door, giving access to the thieves. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives is a federal agency also looking into this case. And investigators in Guntersville have connected a jewelry store robbery to the abduction of two women from Brighton on the same day. Jonathan Banks and Andre Bergen were arrested in Birmingham in connection to both events, but only after an hours-long standoff occurred between the men and police. They were tracked down to a home in Birmingham by the FBI. Several local and federal law enforcement agencies were involved in that standoff. I'm Andrea Tice. For more news affecting Alabamians, go to 1819news.com. And while you're there, subscribe to the daily newsletter.
This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. This is former Alabama Supreme Court Justice Glenn Murdoch. Alabama is a great place to live and work and raise our families because Alabamians are a good people of faith and traditional values. But a huge gambling bill in Montgomery would change our culture forever. Ten massive casinos bringing more crime to our big cities and small towns, highly addictive cell phone betting, and the state selling the lie of lottery riches to the poor and most vulnerable. With all this wrong in the world, this is no time to give up on our traditional values in Alabama. Call and ask your senator to be the leader you elected them to be. To stand strong and vote no on gambling and keep Alabama a great place to live and work and raise our families. Thank you. Call your senator at 334-261-0800. 334-261-0800. 334-261-0800. Paid for by Eagle Forum Alabama. The views and opinions of the following program are solely those of the host and other contributors. These do not necessarily represent those of Liberty Acquisitions 825, Blue Water Broadcasting, its management, staff, or any advertisers. It's time for Montgomery's Conversational Radio Show. It's news and views on News Talk 93.1 FM. To join the conversation, call 272-9228. Shut yourself in a democracy. Shut up, silly woman. I got hairy legs. Joey Clark. Welcome back to News and Views. In the afternoon, I'm Joey. He's Eddie. How you doing, Joey? Doing all right. And as promised, this is from Wallet Hub. Okay. So Uncle Sam takes his cut of our past year's earnings every April. I usually file an extension, Smart but uh, I'm Smart probably going to get it done this month. We'll see. All right, go, brother. You know, you know, but I've learned just don't lie to the IRS. Like, I thought I was in bad with a few grand. I was behind one year. And somebody's like, no, oh, man, I've owned them like 40, 60 grand for a decade. Right. Don't don't sweat this small. Right. Stage, right. If you lie to them, you're probably going to be in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's when you can end up in jail, in prison. But it's got to be uh, a lot of lying to them. If Joey know. Diaz can stay out of prison. Hunter Biden. Yeah. Well, so not. many other big names, of course, yeah. have skirted on that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and since the tax code is so complicated, it's hard for the average bear to tell how they'll be impacted. Very true. One simple ratio known as the quote unquote tax burden helps cut through the confusion. Unlike tax rates, which vary widely based on an individual circumstances, tax burden measures the proportion of total personal income that residents pay towards state and local taxes. It isn't uniform across the U.S. either. To determine the residents with the biggest tax burdens, Wallet Hub compared the 50 states based on the cost of three types of taxes property taxes, individual income taxes, and sales and excise taxes as a share of total personal income in the state. So here are some of the big headline findings. Hey, where's that Bible tax fall, by the way? That'd the be a sales excise tax. Okay. Maybe it's a sin tax. Got a one wonder. Like, oh, you're buying a Bible, you sinner. In see California, I could see it, but not here. Especially when you're buying one of those Trump Bibles. <laughs> it's on the way, by the way. Yeah, I bet he puts from the roof. Uh, New York has the highest overall tax burden. Makes sense to me. While Alaska has the lowest. No state tax. Well, and they have the oil sharing, revenue sharing yeah, program. Yeah, the permit fund program. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a, honestly, it's a really good deal. Maine has the highest property tax burden, while mm. Alabama has the lowest. Yeah. I would think. Um, I would think California would have a bigger problem. California has the highest individual income tax burden, okay. while seven states, including Texas, Florida, and Washington, have the lowest. They have no income tax. No income tax. tax, right? Yeah. Washington has the highest sales and excise tax burden. Washington State, really? 
while I New Hampshire too. has the lowest. Another didn't see that one coming. And of course, red states have a lower tax burden than blue states on average. But when you look into this, you're like, well, Alabama has the lowest property taxes, so we're doing great. And don't how you look at that, Joe. Well, I'm looking at the overall rankings where they give you the total tax burden, property tax where mm -hmm. that ranks, and in income tax where that ranks, sales excise tax where that ranks. So the number one tax state is New York, followed by Hawaii, Vermont, Hawaii. Maine, California, eh? Connecticut, the nutmeg state, mm -hmm. Minnesota, Illinois, New Jersey, and Rhode Island. That's the top 10 tax states. A couple states. of them I can see. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised Massachusetts isn't in there. Give them a minute. Yeah, they'll show up eventually. Right. But uh, now let me go down the list. Let's see, where is Alabama? On overall burden, Alabama is number 38. In the overall burden, mm -hmm. out of 50. Out of 50. So we're not doing too bad. That's no, not too bad. But uh, here's what happens. We have the top, like, I'm considering top, lowest is the top. Like, yeah, I want yeah. no taxes. Yeah. So Alabama is ranked number 50th in terms of tax burden when it comes to your property taxes. We have okay. the lowest in the land. But we're number 34 when it comes to income taxes. And we're number nine. We're in the top 10 when it comes to sales excise taxes. That's what keeps us more middle of the pack here. It doesn't surprise me. Grocery mm -hmm. tax on there too, right? So who is less taxed than Alabama? Let's look at that. Montana, less taxed than Alabama. Ain't nobody there. South Carolina. Oh, that's that's fascinating. Yeah. But they're kind of middle of the pack on every single one. In they just run middle of the road. Yeah. Right. Nevada, less taxed than Alabama. Oklahoma, less tax than Alabama. North Dakota, South Dakota, both. Delaware. That seems strange. It's a little fishy. Yeah. There's something going Somebody on Somebody just there. put that name Delaware. in there. Isn't that where all those places incorporate to? Yes, and that's also Biden's mm -hmm. country, isn't it not? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think somebody slipped that one in. Tennessee, though, less tax than us. Yeah. Which, now you're starting to look at Alabama's neighbors, and it's like, well, Tennessee's kicking some butt right How now. How are they doing on their education, too? I don't know. Florida, less tax than yeah. Alabama. No, sales, or no state tax. Wyoming, less tax than Alabama. New Hampshire. And then, of course, Alaska. So uh, I think we can do better. We should be we like can. one of the least tax states. It drives is. me crazy, though. I mean, they, they, on the taxes, they, you always add more, right? That's, and like on the grocery tax, we talked about, hey, we'd like to have a little bit off. They don't make rules when they add taxes, but they make a lot of rules when they're going to take one off. And that's, they certainly do. And then we're talking about lottery and other things. And one time I never heard of, hey, if we get these gambling bills, we'll be able to reduce some of the tax burden. Never heard that one time. Well, I think we need to have a lower overall tax burden than any of our neighbors. Right now, actually, Mississippi's like the 19th most tax place. Massachusetts is 20th. That's ironic. That's crazy that Mississippi's that heavily taxed. Taxing poor people just... Yeah, man. That, you're kind of stuck in that cycle. Right. So, but it, it, we got to get lower than Tennessee and Florida because we're already lower than Mississippi and Georgia. They both got gambling, too. Right. Man, Mississippi, I didn't know it was that bad. <laughs> That's rough. Ugh. I just don't like taxes at all, honestly. I know, but um, if, the, if there's not much there to tax, you really doesn't do you any good to tax the crap out of people because... You're going to force them out or just force them to become dependent on the state? Well, maybe that's the plan. The, the man's trying oh, to keep everybody down. Joey, I think you nailed it there, buddy. Mm-hmm. Trying to keep them down, getting us bad education while he's drinking that cool, cool water. Yeah. Leaving us with this swill. Mm. Two seven two nine two two eight. Do you think we should cut taxes more in the great state of Alabama? I do. I do. I think we there's definitely that. room for it. Yeah. Though, the, I don't think you're ever going to get an increase in the property taxes around here statewide. You might get local millage increases and stuff. Yeah, but. I, I, the only I think way you could statewide if you bargained with one other tax and you brought up that. But I think that's the only way you'll get it. And honestly, I don't like any taxes, but property tax makes a little more sense than income tax. Yes, it does. And a sales tax, I think, makes more sense. I would like to see no income tax. I would, too. I I'd like to be Income tax, tax is just straight up immoral. Yep, I do, too. Uh, but... You know, you can make the case that a sales tax is more like a use tax to go directly to certain things. Uh, you could say the property, big property owners have more to protect, and thus sure, they're money. relying on the government sure. more. But uh, at the end of the day, it'd be nice if we just, you know, worked as a voluntary society, not 
constantly pretending like, oh, we have a functioning society because some people are allowed to prey on others. And that's something that shocked me in Alaska when I moved up there, just a teenager. Mm. But the whole permanent fund dividend, and it's, it's revenue made off oil investments, and it changes every year. But not only do they not charge you income tax and state tax, they give you money back. And it's per family member. So if there's five of you, five of you get a check. And the economy, it comes out in about November. The economy is built around that. Mm -hmm. You start seeing permanent dividend sales and all that kind of thing. So if a state like that can do that, and it's not incredibly populated, granted they've got oil revenue and that kind of thing, but I don't understand why other states can't do the same. Now let's uh, jump into <clears throat> politics. Yeah. Let me get my boots. Brand new Wall Street Journal poll. Trump leads Biden in six of seven swing states. Doesn't surprise me. Real clear politics average shows Trump leading Biden by seven points in Georgia with Kennedy, West, and Stein in the race. I know it's, Dude, they are worried about RFK they, Jr. Yeah, well, they should be. Whatever we mean by they. They should be. Definitely worried about him. And they, you're right, they should be. But uh, Political Playbook really jumped out this morning. Mm -hmm. It's their, like, morning newsletter. They're worried about this Nebraska threat. I believe the Nebraska governor is throwing to support it behind this idea. Nebraska has this thing where it's based on congressional district. It's how the electoral college votes are divvied up. Okay. So usually the entire state goes red except for the city, Omaha. It goes blue. Okay. And now it's only, I think, one electoral vote, but... That can make a big difference when you're talking about how tight this race is going to yes, be. Could. So the governor has and the Republicans there are trying to say, no, we're going to say winner take all. Whoever takes the state gets all the state's electoral votes. We're not breaking up by congressional district. And that's somewhat normal. Am I missing? That's something? most places. Yeah, yes. Okay. So we'll see. Because I would rather see it that way than go the other way. <laughs> we'll see. <sighs> you just never know, folks. You never know. But you know, speaking of RFK Jr. Yeah. He's now claiming that they edited his interview to make it look like he was saying Biden was more of a threat to democracy than Trump. That CNN edited the video the and way I, they cut it together. I don't know if they did or not, but I would not be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised at all. But here he is. Oh, look, Chris Cuomo landed on, on his CNN, feet. CNN, MSNBC, they won't have me on. CNN had him on last night. And clearly, this was an interview about making him look a certain way. And here's what happened. When people talk about the threat to democracy that Trump poses, do you really think that that is is an equal yeah, evil I mean, to I, Biden? I, I mean, listen, I can make the argument that President Biden is a much worse threat to democracy. And the reason for that is President Biden is the first candidate in history, the first president in history that has used the federal agencies to censor political speech, so to censor his opponent. But the greatest threat the democracy is not somebody who questions election returns, but a president of the United States who used the power of his office to force the social media companies, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to open a portal and give access to that portal to the FBI, to the CIA, to the IRS, to CISA, to NIH, to censor his political critics. So the headlines read... Bobby Kennedy thinks Biden bigger threat than Trump. Is that fair? Robert F. Kennedy Jr. here is to make the case for himself. I told you to be careful what you wish for. Um, here's one thing we know for sure. The Biden administration is not giving you security today, not after that interview. Do you want people to believe that you think that President Biden has done more objectionable things vis-a-vis -vis our democracy than former President Trump did in the aftermath of the last election. No, I, as you heard, Chris, I, what I said was that I can make this argument, and I didn't say definitively whether I believed one or the other was more dangerous than democracy. I did say that I don't believe either of them are going to destroy democracy. Both sides are telling us the other guy is the end of the republic. But, you know, they, they're both lame duck presidents. They're going to be in there four years. The, their, their, their opponent, political opponents, are going to be announced two years later. There'll be a new Congress in two years later. And we, ha we have strong institutions in our country. We have judiciary. That we have 
the press to some extent. We've got Congress and you have the military. You've got a lot of institutions that, that are bulwarks against a you know, tyrant coming in and taking over democracy. So I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're, both, we're all being told each one is, uh, is a threat because it, it's a way of using fear to force us into a binary choice where we're forced into the canal, into this channel that nobody wants to go to, where we either have to vote for, we have to vote for the lesser of two evils, and nobody wants to do that. But it keeps them from, you know, it, it keeps a lot of the public from considering people like me that have much, I have a much higher popularity rating than either of these candidates. I, so more people would rather see me in office than, presumably, than either of them. Uh, but they are not going to vote for me because the, you know, the media and this whole sort of cartel from both sides is telling them, oh, you have to choose between these two guys and the other guy. It's so scary. Now, the point I made last night, and the way I'm very grateful, by the way, to Aaron Burnett, as you know. All right, well, whatever. <clears throat> now, I think he makes a good point, but uh, I, I'm a little tired of you must pick the Republican or the Democrat or else the world will end. I agree with him completely there. But uh, I don't know. I think he's he could easily play spoiler. You wonder, though, could he actually win a state? Ooh, a state? I would say yeah. I think he could win a state. A state. A state. I would think so. You got to wonder what state that would be. Yeah, that that's. Oof. It's not clear, mm -mm. Uh, but we'll see where this goes in here. Let's break down this Wall Street Journal poll. Got some time here. All right. The new Wall Street Journal poll of seven swing states has plenty of bad news for President Biden, who's trailing in six of the seven most important battlegrounds of the 2024 election. More broadly, it also has one piece of potentially devastating news for the party Biden leads. The pillars that hold up the Democratic coalition are showing fractures. This is stuff we've been talking about for a while now, Eddie. At this moment, under this president, the mix of black, Latino, and young voters who have been crucial to electing Democratic candidates are withholding support from Biden or shifting towards Donald Trump. So they're either staying home or they're going towards Donald Trump or they're going with Cornel West, Jill Stein, or Robert F. Kennedy Jr. This is a trend, though, that's particularly dramatic among men. By contrast, it is hard to find a group where Biden is improving on his standing from the 2020 election. So not it's even, all bad news. Not even with Latinos? No, Latinos are going towards Trump. Hmm. Interesting. The seven months of campaigning and advertising to come might yet reassemble the Democratic coalition, like RFK Jr. was saying there. Fear, 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 fear. Yep. <clears throat> hmm. Particularly since many voters have yet to settle on a candidate. But Trump displays you know weaknesses that might keep him from fully capitalizing on the moment as well. But... The poll suggests that Biden has the more challenging task ahead. Mm -hmm. Here's a look at some of the findings. They explain why the poll, which interviewed over 4,200 people, it's a pretty big poll, finds Biden leading in only a single tested state, Wisconsin, which I believe the Republicans had a pretty damn good night in Wisconsin last night. I believe they did too, Joe. Interesting. But Biden is trailing in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, North Carolina, Nevada, and Pennsylvania against Trump on a ballot with third party and independent candidates. Pennsylvania. So here's one of the big takeaways. Hmm. Men are moving. This is what I've been saying, that the biggest political divide in America right now mm -hmm. is men and women, in particular single men and women. But here's what the poll says. The gender gap has been a durable part of American politics for decades, but it now might be widening. The journal poll finds Biden draw, he draws only 37% of men in the seven swing states on a ballot that includes only him and Trump. About the same as the 38% the journal found in a poll of voters nationwide in February. Those are far weaker showings than the 46% of men Biden won in 2020. At the same time, Biden's hold among women is also weakening to about 50% support, down four percentage points between 2020 and February poll. But it is the men who are showing the greater shift away from Biden. In 2020, Biden won 55% of women and 46% of men, a gap of nine points. In the journal's national and swing state polls, that gap is now 13 points, due mostly to his deteriorating support among men. The next takeaway, minority voters shift towards GOP. 
Trump has support from 30% of black men. More than I thought. A lot higher than I thought. Wow. I, I thought maybe low 20s. <clears throat> maybe. 30% of black men supporting Trump. 47% of Latino men supporting Trump, according to this journal survey. Shocking, too. Both remarkably high shares that might alarm the Biden campaign. Trump is winning Latino men outright, with Biden drawing only 40%. While it is impossible to compare the seven-state poll to the national surveys from 2020, the new journal survey makes it clear that Biden's political standing is weak among these groups. In 2020, Biden won 91% of black voters of both genders. Well, he's now at 70%? With black men, that's not a 20-something point drop? Wow. They buy gas too, Joey. He also won 63% of Latino voters in 2020, compared with 45% of the journal's national survey and 48% of the swing state sample. These are huge drops. Younger, older voters move opposite ways. Younger voters are another important part of the Democratic coalition that looks to be underperforming for Biden. He's winning only 50% of voters under the age of 30 in both recent journal surveys, 10 percentage points more than Trump. In 2020, though, he won this group by 25 points. Well, so a 15-point drop. Well, you know, they've, seen him, they've seen him in action and go, you know what? I'm not going to vote for you again. But here's funny. something that also doesn't shock me. By contrast, Biden appears to be holding his own among voters age 65 and older. You see that? So the boomers and silent generation. I ran across a few the last few days, yep. Yep. Y'all are doing great things for the country, guys. Well, Trump's standing has deteriorated. No, I kind of agree with Tim Dillon these days. Yeah. That there's, there's something going on with it. There are great people who are older. Age is just a number to some people. Don't get me wrong. But there is but, a uh, certain mentality up with that generation where they're just going to go to the wheels freaking fall off. And they don't care what burden they leave on the next generation. they got a ton of money. Right. They're, they're some of the worst, man. Anyway, sorry if I offended, I suppose. Yeah. But Biden's share of seniors has been about 48% of the journal's national and swing state polls in line with his 2020 showing. Trump, on the other hand, is drawing about 46% of seniors in the two journal polls, down from 51% in 2020. Put another way, Trump won seniors by about three points while still losing the election. The new polls show him losing by about two points among seniors, a group that makes up about 28% of the electorate, more than twice the size of the under 30 voters. So that's interesting. Very yeah. interesting. You know what it is? People who are 65 and older tend to still watch corporate news and trust corporate news. Good point, Joey. But their their savings, their retirement, their Social Security, all that, and the cost of living have been taking a hit for well, the last couple of years. How do they not see that? Well, because, again, the fear campaigns that you are probably risk averse at that point in life. Most folks are. Don't blame people for that. So even if you're losing a little bit, you don't want to do a big change because this a big true. change, you don't know, the that's, devil you don't right. know. So exactly speak. right. You're right. <sighs> the journal poll also finds that the electorate is unhappy with its options in the election as swing state voters have an unfavorable view of both Trump and Biden. That is one reason that 15 percent of voters, when given the choice, opt for an independent or third party candidate. Woo. Just to put it in there. None of the above. That is a big enough share to swing the election in close states. RFK Jr., the scion, one of the most famous families in American history, presents the widest, uh, excuse me, biggest wild card among the alternative candidates. He's drawing as much as 15% of the vote in Nevada, 12% in Michigan, and only 7% in Pennsylvania, and 8% in Georgia. And that's not one part of the other, that's the entire... Vote. Right. Well, then that's the game. That's really... The question is, who's he pulling? That's what I'm wondering. Who's he, to me, I could see him pulling from pulling from both. I, to yes, be honest. I agree. Uh, Completely, agree. to be honest. Yeah. Since I've described myself as politically homeless, I, I tend to think I would be somebody RFK Jr. would be courting. Mm -hmm. um, and I go back and forth, honestly. Um, and also, I'm well aware of, in Alabama, who's going to win the state of Alabama in the 2024 presidential election, Eddie? Well, that would be Donald Trump, Joey. There are those that think I'm a very stable genius. That's right. And, uh, you know, speaking of Trump, do you know, uh, he's saying stuff that just, uh, you got to think, pisses people off. For instance, uh, he put 
this out at, uh, well, one of his rallies in Wisconsin. I believe this was last night. Let's listen in. We were headed until we got uh, sidelined by a wonderful election. Wasn't that wonderful? Remember 10 o'clock? Everyone's calling me. They say, congratulations, sir. The biggest people, congratulations, sir. I said, yeah, but, but you know, these people are cheaters. But but I don't like to accept anything yet. And then at 3.02 in the morning, a lot of dumps happened, a lot of bad things happened. But you know what? The good news is we've seen how bad they are. And because of that, there's more spirit now than ever before. Because of that, we'll be able to do things to make our country great again that we probably could have never really done had it been a more traditional turnover. So, it- <laughs> so he's not backing away from that message no. by any means. Well, you can't, can you? Well, no, you got to double down on it, but I I don't think it's just a matter of ability or or desire. Mom's going to say, what the hell are you doing? You embarrass me. (laughs) (laughs) You know how many times I've said that, Joey. I didn't know that's going to start that way, but. (laughs) Yeah, no, but this is Trump leaning into, you know, you bought a Trump Bible for your buddy in Jamaica. Well, uh, you know, there are all, a lot of folks upset that Trans Visibility Day, whatever the heck yes, that I, means. Uh, on Easter. It was on Easter. A lot of people upset with that. Well, here's Trump's repost to oh. that. Mom's going to say, what the hell are you doing? You embarrass me. <laughs> you embarrass me. <laughs> no, the, the papers, the fake news will say it was tremendous dissension. Tremendous. Yeah, one guy. And he's now scared stiff because he's got to go home to his mother. The mother will say, we, I saw you in television. You embarrassed me. Bing, bing. With your support, we're going to win the Wisconsin Republican primary in a landslide. That'll be in a few hours. Which they did. And November 5th, we are going to win this state. We're going to win the White House. And we are going to save our country. We're going to save our country. And what the hell was Biden thinking when he declared Easter Sunday mm-hmm. to be Trans Visibility Day? Such total disrespect to Christians, and November 5th is going to be uh, called something else. You know what it's going to be called? Christian Visibility Day, when Christians turn out in numbers that nobody has ever seen before. Let's call it Christian Visibility Day. There you go, folks. Just setting the table for these months ahead. It's going to be crazy. He ain't hurting for material. We'll be right back. Want to carry News Talk in your pocket? Download the News Talk 93.1 app from the App Store. Available on iPhone and Android. Never miss a moment. Download now. Hi there, I'm Kim Williams with Alabama Home Mortgage. And I'm Madeline Cannon. And we have some exciting news to share with you. We've been serving the state of Alabama for many, many years. And now we are able and ready to offer the same great mortgage financing in Georgia and Florida as well. Our company may be Alabama Home Mortgage, but now we can finance your Georgia Home Mortgage and your Florida Home Mortgage too. We couldn't be more excited to extend our customer base to our neighboring states. For years, we have had customers call us in hopes we could assist them with purchasing their vacation cabin in North Georgia or their dream home in Florida. And now we can. For those of you who have family and friends that live in Florida, in Georgia, be sure to tell them the good news. Whether you are looking to purchase or refinance a home located in Alabama, Georgia, or Florida, you owe it to yourself to give Alabama Home Mortgage a call at 567-4223. That's 567-4223. Or visit us online at myalabamahomemortgage.com to complete an application on your time. It's not just a slogan. Call Alabama Home Mortgage because, folks, there is a difference in mortgage companies. NMLS 1586 8 equal housing lender. Call Prune Masters, the professional pruners with over 30 years of experience and that's all they do to find out how you can get your hedges professionally pruned call 220-2200 for a free estimate prune masters 220-2200 for too long alabama's statewide news companies have shamed us for our conservative christian values alabama deserves a news company that cherishes our culture a company that isn't bought and paid for by the powers that be 1819 news is that company run by alabamians for alabamians 1819 News celebrates what is good and beautiful about our state while exposing those who work against our values in secret. Just go to 1819news.com to learn more. Subscribe to our newsletter. That's 1819news.com. 
This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. The premier place the river region turns to for news, weather, traffic, and opinions. News Talk 93.1 FM WACV. And horse face. Shut up, silly woman. Joey Clark. Welcome back. We call this show News and Views on our local airwaves. Online, we're calling it Joey Clark Live. Mm-hmm. And uh, appreciate all the love out there and, and the hate, too. I say, don't forget the hate. The love and the hate come together. Don't forget the hate. I don't know what happens. That is definitely part of what happens. Hey, you know who's uh, bringing us this part of the program? Who that? That's Pro Services. Dude, that's great folks over there, Really great folks. Ashley and that team are ready to help you out. Who was the first guy you met from Pest Pro years ago? That would be, well, the first person was, it Zach? I met was Ashley, and then she introduced me to Zach, and then I met Jonathan. I think I've just, I've met probably five or six people that involve with Pest Pro, and every one of them do not surprise me how professional they are. Ashley brings them in, and she looks for the top quality people to begin with, and then she likes people that are like-minded like her, that are really into customer service. There you go. So I, I've, I've enjoyed my time with them. In fact, I got an update on the whole mosquito thing. Yeah. You know, we had it sprayed last Thursday. I've been there every day since then. Have not seen but a couple of mosquitoes, but nobody's gotten bit. That's amazing. And, the, and I've, I've got to And ask, you're right honestly, next to the water. Yeah, I'm right on the water. I got woods all around me, so I, it, it was a mosquito haven. But I've got to ask Jonathan, the few mosquitoes I've seen, they look like they're on the outs. Looks like they're having some issues. Yeah, they're having a little trouble. <laughs> so uh, I'm very, very pleased with that mosquito service. I don't want my guests or my grandchildren to get ate up with bugs. So, folks, yeah, if you want to actually enjoy your backyard or your place on the lake or maybe the front porch, mm-hmm. maybe you're tired of spraying grandma yes. with off. Yes. Why not get your yard treated for those mosquitoes? You put money into your yard, I'd imagine. Yep. Why not be able to enjoy, enjoy it? it? during these uh, wet, hot months ahead. But of course, when it's wet and hot, termites like that environment yes, as well. Yes, they do, Joey. And Pest Pro can do, well, a free termite inspection. you got to ask them. But that termite inspection is very wise to get done because homeowner's insurance doesn't cover termite Correct. treatment or damage repairs. Correct. And damage repairs are much more expensive than the treatment. You might as well go ahead and get it done. And Pest Pro Services can help you there, as well as all your pest control needs. We've only scratched the surface. Why don't you make them your everyday pest control company? I would. Work for me. So that number, 265-9990. That's 265-9990. Or you can always go to ppsriverregion.com or just search Pest Pro Services on the Book of Faces. When you want to know, call a pro. Pest Pro Services. And be sure to tell them that Joey and Eddie, those fellows on the radio, sent you. 272-9228. Now, should we check in on what some of the other side is saying? I think we should. It's very important to hear both sides, Joey. Yes. Now, I'm not going to a politician because I played Hillary Clinton (laughs) yesterday. And it's really after ranting and raving about it and saying she was some blood-sucking thing. Yeah. um, I think, actually, they need to trot Hillary out more often. Dude, I've seen her. Because she makes the case for Biden all the much worse. When Jimmy Fallon, what a tough interview. (laughs) <laughs> okay, Hillary, what what about all these people who don't want to vote? Here? <laughs> but, hey, hey, Quest, give me a beat. Right. Um, what about all these people that say they, like 70% of people, Hillary, don't want to vote for Trump or Biden? What do you say to them? And she said something in fact, well, they should just get over themselves. That's kind of why I heard it. Oh, miserable. Please, though, keep saying crap like that. You're going to drive people far, far away. No, it must be a binary choice where fear, fear, fear is instilled in your heart. Plus, she's so hard on the eyes. It's hard no, to look yeah. at her. You know, some people are easy on the eyes. Sure. Not that one. Yeah. Not that one. You kind of squint so you don't have to see so much. Yeah. So I don't want to go to Hillary. There's a bunch of clips of Biden at some speech press conference today where he's slurring his words. I'm like, well, it's 
it's Wednesday, right. ain't it? Correct. Thank you. Um, yeah, if it's not a big speech where he has to be like on, it's awful to watch. It's awful to watch when he's on, so to speak, because he's on something. Do you know? Did they ever release the transcripts with him and his doctor? That recent. Um, I don't know. I'm just curious. The one that uh, I can't think of his name, but the one that basically said that he's incompetent, but we can't charge him because he's an old man. No, but the guy I think we need to go to. Do you know the name Andrew Weissman? That sounds very familiar. Yeah, he was one of the pit bulls on the Mueller team. Ooh. He's also one of the guys I think was the lead, one of the lead prosecutors on the Enron case. Okay, and so he, he's a he's a top flag sort of headhunter in okay. the legal business. I'll put it that way. Uh, this guy gets paid by the scalp. Mm. But you know, it's all about justice, right? I don't know if that's the case, Joe. But here is Andrew Weissman talking to Wolf Blitzer. That's a wolf doing. I don't know. Let's let's pull him up. Look at that guy. It's like the Santa Claus of corporate news. Yeah, I'll give him that. And actually, wasn't both Tucker and uh, Chris Cuomo saying Wolf Blitzer actually was kind of pretty cool? Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I think someone else said the same thing. It wasn't what they thought he was. Like he can't, he's very serious about his job. And I'd imagine it's pretty high pressure. So you can be a bit of a prima donna. Right. But they said Wolf was a, a pro in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. though he clearly knows what not to say. He knows how to play it. He knows how to play the game. Yeah. Yes. So here's Wolf Blitzer talking to Andrew Weissman about, uh, well, Trump could be looking at jail time because of the horse faced Stormy Daniels. Let's uh, listen in together, folks. Portrayal of what happened. But having said that, there are obviously going well, to be witnesses who gather a lot of attention. Whether I thought David Hillary was hard to listen to. <laughs> Pecker, the um, uh, person who was running the National Enquirer, uh, that's alleged to have taken a position to help uh, Donald Trump to keep information from becoming public. It's sort of a bizarre thing for a news organization um, to be doing to not only keep information, but be doing it on behalf of one party, not um, doing it in a bipartisan way. Wait, whoa, 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 wait. Are you telling me catch and kill tactics by the media? Nobody ever does that. Media organizations don't, especially don't the nationals don't collude. To have a story but not report Dude, on it. Dude, they do stories about a story. Right. No, and didn't we just have the conversation with Jeff Ford at the beginning of the show about that uh, police video that was exactly. leaked that 1819 posted exclusively? Mm -hmm. Like all these other companies clearly had access to the video. It's on Twitter. Nah. And they won't. Nah, I can't find it. So what are you talking about? Catching kill. Twitter, literally, Twitter 1.0 destroyed the Hunter Biden laptop story. Yep. Like, they do this all the time. This is just part of the part of the system, dude. The trade, the cloak and dagger sort yeah. of stuff. That anyway, let's keep listening to this guy. Stormy Daniels will obviously be an important witness to set the predicate for the hush money payments, and then of course Michael Cohen because he is at the heart yes. of this. <laughs> so, so I think those will be Michael important Cohen. witnesses. Yeah. So but credible. I think you're going to hear a lot about uh, the documents and how they corroborate all of those witnesses in the substance of what they um, put forth. And obviously, um, those witnesses will be subject to enormous cross-examination, particularly Michael Cohen. Good point. If Trump were to be convicted in this case, uh, what kind of penalty potentially could he be looking at? You know, he could be looking at jail. Um, there, <laughs> this is one where uh, the judge, I think, is going to be looking at the rule of law to see how other people were treated. Other people with a similar uh, criminal background, I think this is a, an area where Donald Trump's pretrial behavior is going to be relevant. Um, if you have someone who's contrite, if you have someone who shares that he's respectful of the rule Goodness of law, gracious. that this was an aberration, um, that is something that the court can take into account. But if you think that the defendant actually is running basically as an outlaw, um, and is basically thumbing his nose at the judicial process, and it shows no sign of remorse, and essentially is a recidivist. Those are factors that a judge can consider. And I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This nation was founded by outlaws who said "f you" to a corrupt judicial system and a corrupt political system. It's a feather in Trump's cap, and it's why I think some of these poll numbers. Especially with young folks, doesn't matter what you look like. I guess 
if you're a young woman, you don't like it that much. Not as much. And honestly, I see the treatment some young ladies get online. It ain't pretty. Dude, I could. It ain't pretty at all. It ain't pretty. So I kind of get it. But it's just, really? This is all they got? Okay, what do they got? They got an old hooker and a disbarred lawyer. They walk in a bar. <laughs> I mean, they got a bad She wasn't joke. a hooker. She was a porn star. Did she get paid to have sex? On camera for artistic purposes. Okay. You really are a theocrat. Let's go to David. Hey, David, how you doing? Does that guy not remind you of Squig's words? <laughs> it's like Millhouse from The Simpsons has grown up. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I've yeah. ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I that's all I can think of when that guy was talking. <laughs> well, it, it it looks like they based Squidward off this guy to an appearance. That guy, I know. He's leaning into the character, man. I was I was could just hear him sitting there. Walsh, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good oh wow that's unbelievable and for someone to sit there and talk about how trump is thumbs his, uh, his nose at the rule of mm -hmm. law yeah like the democrat party in general doesn't do that on a daily basis yeah give me a break right so, anyway have a good one guys Appreciate See Dave. It. yeah as our good friend jeff dice keeps saying uh dropping pretenses that's what's happening uh, we've dropped our pretenses when it comes to politics and more and more folks i would hope are starting to see what i've been saying for some time now that politics is fundamentally force and fraud doesn't mean there can't be good people that make good things happen on the margins right but at the end of the, the, day, end of the day this is not some polite dinner party we're going to i'm sorry this isn't like greek life and by the way maybe it is like greek life because there's some nasty crap that happens behind the scenes the machine the machine. I've heard. Many I think you and I would look. Uh, you and I would look pretty good in black robes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Black is very slimming. Yeah, <laughs> we both need it. You mean more than you these days? But... <laughs> mm. Very slimming. Yeah, that's why judges wear them. Hey, we got to hit another break. Right. <laughs> Wait, you calling all these? Uh, you calling? Uh, you gonna call a judge fat? You calling a judge chubby? Nope. I saw James Anderson the other day. He looks very slim. Very slim, does he? Good he looks deal. great. Good he, deal. I mean, look at the... He must work Did out. Did he have his robe on? No. <laughs> no, he didn't. I'm and, like, and he still looks slim. Right. Good deal. Uh, well, hey, this part of the program, though, brought to you by Montgomery Men's Health. And guys, two things can happen as we men mature. Erectile dysfunction and... Can happen. Low testosterone. And it's oh, nothing yeah. to deny, put off, be ashamed about, and certainly not something to wait to get fixed. Guys hate going to the doctor. I get it. I hate going to the doctor, too. But Montgomery Men's Health was created to take care of guys just like us. That's right. And when it comes to, you know, those bedroom issues, yeah. the reality is pills often quit working. And guys Over start time. making excuses for not coming to bed. Mm. Did you know studies are actually showing that men will be more irritable and argumentative before bed just to avoid failing at intimacy? I've heard this. No one can be like something that's just like, I don't even want to go there. Right. So I'm going to pick a fight and we'll go to bed angry, which is not great advice. I don't think so. But, but uh, you know, so fellas, if you're lacking motivation, energy, you're always tired, uh, you're having a low sex drive, uh, you just don't feel like you used to. Like you're walking through life in a fog. Well, mm -hmm. knowing whether or not you have low T is huge in combating some of these issues. And the providers there at Montgomery Men's Health will conduct a testosterone-focused lab workup plus a consultation for only $99. And at Montgomery Men's Health, they have low T treatments that can truly change lives. Men can experience higher energy, better gains in the gym. Brother, brother. That's right, brother. Better mental clarity, improved sleep patterns, a faster metabolism. You usually even notice an increased libido. That's all right there. That is all right. You can actually book the same day that you call. Guys, it's time to feel amazing and hit your goals this year. That number, 440-3663. That's 440-3663. <clears throat> or you can go to MontgomeryMensHealth.com to book your appointment today. We'll be right back. He may not know whether he's coming or going. 
But whether you're going to work or coming home, Greg Budell is there. Mornings, 6 till 9, and afternoons, 3 till 6. Only on News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Rich Thomas Weather, a service of Riverside Chevrolet Wetumpka. If it's Chevy, it's Riverside. Best price, best selection. Check them out on the web at RiversideUSA.net. Well, hi, everybody. Some much cooler air is funneling into the state, which means some cool days and some cold nights ahead. Today's high temperature in the upper 60s is way below normal for this late in the season. A little breezy, good bit of sun. Tonight, mostly clear and chilly. Overnight low temperature falls to about 43. I think we'll be in the upper 60s again on Thursday and Friday with lots of sun. In fact, uh, the nights on Thursday and Friday night will fall to the upper 30s. Then a little warmer over the weekend. From the National Tropical Weather Conference, this is Rich Thomas for Blue Water Broadcasting. Thank you once again for voting ASE the best credit union and best mortgage company in Central Alabama's Reader's Choice Awards. We're honored to serve our members for 69 years and counting. ASE Credit Union, your life, your this is your roving reporter, and today I am talking with an elk. Uh, hey man. Mr. Elk, I was just wondering, what do elk do to take care of their money? Well, like most smart folks, we call David Erdit. You mean Alabama's most favorite asset preservationist? That's him, man. We call him up at 334-279-7431 or... 205-479-0839. I see. Yes, he is our preferred money man. The money man with the money plan. Uh, you've been paying attention. Well, could you give us those numbers one more time? 334-279-7431 or 205-479-0839. And I just want to try to give you a heads up, man. Oh, what's that? I'm uh, not an elk. Not an elk, huh? Well, then, pray tell, what are you? Ah, Knights of Columbus. I am not even going to make a comment. Uh, well, the baby liked it. How are you going to use your tax refund? New flooring? New countertops? Carol's Carpet Flooring America is locally owned and operated by local experts so you can achieve the most beautiful and updated looks while supporting your community. You'll enjoy personalized service that you'll not find anywhere else. They can make your dreams come true with top-of-the-line hardwood, carpet, laminate, tile, and luxury vinyl. They have everything you need in flooring. Go to carolscarpetmontgomery.com or visit their showroom on the Northeastern Boulevard. What are you planning on using your tax refund on? With Southern Steel's strong, durable, and built-to-last metal structures, you can build anything from towering warehouses, pole barns, manufactured metal roof panels, or even a barn dominium. Save time and money with a quick turnaround and enjoy unmatched protection against the elements. Whether you're a business owner seeking efficiency or a homeowner looking for peace of mind, choose Southern Steel for a lifetime of security. Trust in quality. Visit them today and build your dreams in steel. 1295 North McDonough Street, 240 20 223. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. Trustworthy, accurate, immediate. Carrying your voice across the river region. News Talk 93.1 FM WACV. Welcome back to News and Views in the Afternoon. I'm your host, Joey Clark. Eddie Bader still in the studio with me. Hey, Joe. How you doing, Eddie? Hi. You know, I got like four songs done now. And like the one that I start each hour with, that's completely done. Really? And they're singing on and everything. You make a that one, too, that I just came into. I just got it full. I don't think... I just feel embarrassed, though. Share it, folks. They're like, that's that's you the jackass work. on talk radio. Yeah, like, listen to this jam. <laughs> right. Last time somebody in Alabama politics did something like that was Cliff Sims when he released a very sweet song about yeah. his daughter. And everybody's making fun of it. Yeah, that didn't go too well, Joey. I thought it was good. Well, that's the artist in you, Joey. Yeah, no, like, a-holes <laughs> in the political world, man. <laughs> like, miserable people. Hey, let's go to Ray Bowles from Prattville Carpet. Hey, Ray. Ray Bowles, how you doing, buddy? Man, I am doing good. We got good news and bad news. Uh oh. The bad news is somebody found the troll yesterday. Somebody found the troll. Wow. Is, well, Monday, Monday. I keep thinking today's Tuesday. I'm a day behind. Okay. 
they, they found it on Monday evening. So Ooh. the 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 bad news is the search is over. The good news is it was a lucky winner to got a thousand dollars and he planned on going to Florida with it. Oh, Ooh, all right. Nice, good choice. Yeah. It was it was a really fun little thing we did. We might just do that again next um Easter. I think that was something that the entire community had fun looking for. Good deal, man. Well, I'm glad it went well. I'm glad there was a lucky winner. And uh, you still uh, selling carpet? We are. And, and the truth is that nobody at the store knew where that thing was, including myself. Well, uh, I told Morgan, leave it out of the store. I don't want to have to lie to folks. <laughs> I don't know where it is. No, I'm glad you guys had a real good contest, man. I know you had a lot of people in Pratt were looking for that. Hey, you know, look, I'm, I'm not great about trying to advertise on Facebook and promote on Facebook. I got people that do that. I think we had like two followers before we started. We had 1,700 afterwards. Wow. wow. That's good, Ray. I don't know if that's good or bad. That's I good, buddy. I'm yeah. not on Facebook. Never been on Facebook. Don't understand it. I, I, I don't understand why you want to know. let everybody know when you're going to the bathroom. Well, I, somebody's got to look at the delicious meal I'm eating. Well, some of so my best tweets have been on the toilet. <laughs> I, mean, I just I don't get why you want everybody to know every aspect of your life. I agree. I do agree. I, yeah, yeah, and mine would be so boring. I just literally go home, we talk, we go to bed, we get up, we go back to work. See, if you put that out there, people well, go, he's lying. He's hiding something. There's more to Ray than that. <laughs> That's right. So... But hey, look, if y'all need a floor, call us, 285-8117. We're going to come out and give you a free measurement. Next thing you know, you got a new floor down. Just that simple. And be sure when you call 285-8117 to tell them you heard Ray Balls on the radio with uh, Joey and Eddie. Guys, y'all have a great afternoon. You, you too, too Ray. Ray. See you, brother. Now, we have a Katie Britt clip. Okay. You want to watch the Katie Britt clip? You know I'm down for some Katie. Yeah. Let's listen in to Alabama's junior senator. She's going to tell a little story here. Okay. I encourage you on building relationships that are built on both trust and respect. Now, this is only in one channel, so it makes me think, do the people out there in Radio Land hear it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's keep going. Okay. Respect. Some of my very best friends in the United States Senate are people who I don't share political views with, one of which is Senator John Fetterman from Pennsylvania. John and I became, everybody knows John, right? Uh, <laughs> We became friends at freshman orientation in November and maintained that friendship through. They don't tell you this, but when you're a new senator, they put you in the basement of Dirksen, which means that you have cinder block walls, no windows, and a lack of air conditioning. Work well, there. John and I hmm. were down there together. And as we worked through, and I told you, as I was thinking about how am I approaching this, how am I going to make a difference, he was doing the same thing. And we bonded. And when he was brave enough to say, I have some mental health challenges and I am going to seek help because treatment works, he invited me to Walter Reed to visit him. And I thought for him to trust me enough to be in that space with him is incredibly humbling and something I will absolutely never forget. So whether it's John or Patrick Leahy's uh, new senator in his seat, Peter Welch of Vermont, or whether it is Cory Booker of New Jersey, these are some of my greatest friends in the United States Senate. And while we might not agree on much politically, we all took the same oath of office. We are all united under one flag, and we all have a deep love for our country that supersedes which side of the aisle that we fall on. And by getting in the same room, having real conversations, we end up finding common ground that we otherwise would have never known we had. And where those things overlap, that's where you have to march forward. Well, kind of touching. <clears throat> she reached out to Fetterman. Let's go to Eric the Dog. Hey, Eric the Dog. What up, dog? Hola. You know, I'm about tired of that lady. What she should have said is, while me and him were both down there waiting on Mitch's phone call, he told me that he needed a Xanax. Stop it, man. Nice. Seriously. I mean, come on. Stop the dramatic voice. Stop it. Stop it. It makes you seem very disingenuine. 
And how are you going to tell somebody else's mental health is business? Well, yeah, everybody, everybody got everybody a, kind of he had a stroke. Yeah. Oh, volunteer well, checked himself in there. And actually, uh, Fetterman kind of seems to be here. better than Dr. Oz would have well, been. Well, the one thing that she did say is treatment works. And look at Fetterman now compared to Fetterman when he went in. And I got to agree with her on that 100%. Well, and now have they the changed the dress for code you. for him there for a second? Yeah, kind of. But... <laughs> and then, you know, Susan Collins goes, if you don't oh, get, change it threat. back, I'm going to show up on the floor in a bikini. And I'm such telling you, boys, it's cold. <laughs> Miss Peaches. <laughs> <laughs> that lady we, but yeah. you know katie's right we got to soften her discourse <laughs> yeah we'll soften the discourse we'll, they'll just swap that out for stool softeners i'm sure that'll make it a lot easier for everybody else yeah, no i think we could raise some hell and also be considerate of different types of people i, I, I think you can have fun can and be do all that same it, crap. When, when politicians start doing that it makes it seem like uh they're being fake and disingenuous and they're trying to play feelings instead of facts and uh, and I'm I'm over it. Stop stop trying that. to play with my emotions. I get that. Just tell me the truth that you're waiting. You and him are both waiting on Mitch to call, so y'all know what to do in the next vote. And then you know y'all were discussing his mental health issues, and you felt bad for him, and you went to visit him. Whatever. I mean, every good thing you do, you don't run around and go tell everybody. I, I visited so and so in the hospital. Ain't I good? Get over yourself. So All right. That nice. I hear you. Well, well after that reaction, I'm yeah. going to keep this in the bank just to torture you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I'll call and tell you how I feel about it later. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> See you, dog. No, I think we can do both. We can make fun of people, raise a little hell. In fact, we make fun of our closest friends the most. We make fun of ourselves the most. Yeah, well, and also, I think it is going to take all types, uh, whether you're a populist or establishment or whatever the hell you want to call yourself. It is, at the end of the day, going to take all types of Americans if we're going to get the heck out of this gutter that we're stuck in. Agreed. Hey, let's get out of here. Hi. Greg Budell and Happy Hour. He's next. Broadcasting from the Riverside Chevrolet Master Control Center, this is WACV Kusada, News Talk 93.1 FM. When it's Chevy, it's Riverside.